Right then, uh, we have a clear leader in the CSGO competition, um, and you know what? We will be discussing that more and more as the game goes on today. Um, SEO, uh, James, uh, joining me in the panel. Um, Listen, let's talk about this reason game investor team prophecy. If I was to put you on the spot right now, when we get those maps up, I mean, which map will prophecy be wanting? Which map will reason be wanting? What's going to happen today? I feel like reason are always going to try and get that cobble pick, obviously. That's the only map they want so far. They beat Epsilon on it, which is kind of surprised to everyone. That's what they should be aiming for. But I feel like prophecy will adjust for the first time. They, like, past three weeks, they vetoed Nuke and Inferno every week. I feel like this is the time they'll change that and probably get rid of cobble, for example. Mm. I mean, and what about yourself, James, in terms of what, those maps and, and which will play to their strengths? I mean, I know you said you know Slap a little bit. I mean, which map will, will, will sort of benefit both teams? Uh, it depends on the, on the structure of the team. You know, my experience with Slap is when he used to play on uh, all Swedish teams and they would be execute heavy, so a map like Cash would work really well for them. So it depends on, on what the strengths of this particular team are. Uh, team are sorry. So if they're a strategical team, then maybe a map like Overpass is going to be good. If they are more of a picky team, then, then a map like Cash, it can work either way. It can work against you if, if you're unable to defend. So it, it depends. It's about playing to the strengths of their own team, essentially. So if they want to be, go for a strat heavy map or a more open map where they can benefit on uh, dueling, mm. then that would be a preference. So it depends on what they want to do in, in that respect. Well, um, here we go. Um, uh, Prophecy won the coin toss. Uh, I've been told uh, Reason uh, will ban, will come, their first one, they've banned Train. Yeah, they've never banned Train so far, which okay. is a bit of a surprise. But Prophecy, I've played it twice and won twice. Nuke is expected from Prophecy. They banned it every week. Cash ban, kind of weird, because obviously you think back last week, Prophecy yeah. at 16 0 is a bit odd, but they might not be comfortable playing it. You, you they leave Cobble in. in there. They Hello. leave Cobble in. Okay. And then obviously, hmm, reason don't pick it. Yeah, so... <laughs> they, must, uh, they must lack confidence on it or something, I guess. So Overpass and Mirage are mm. going to be those uh, maps. I believe the first one will be Overpass. Yeah. So what, I mean, what would be the logic of Reason saying, let's ban cash, even though you know Prophecy uh, took, took a, a heavy drubbing uh, last week? Yeah, I feel like it's a case of confidence in the map, I suppose. Like, it's, stereotypically, in the past, Dust 2 was like a UK map. But because that's out of the pool, cash has kind of switched into being that map. So usually you'd think UK teams would be like, yeah, we'll play cash. Mm. This case, not, not happening. But one, one thing also is, even if they took a beating on that map, you can either pick to your own strengths or pick to your opponent's weaknesses. And if you choose to go for the latter, then that can be a problem if, you're, if your defense, for example, is not as strong as, say, Envy's defense or, or whoever. So, so you need to do what works for you uh, mostly. It's a safer bet than doing, doing, doing what you perceive doesn't work for your opponent because styles make fights, as they say, in mixed martial arts, right? So um, they may have a, better, a much better performance against you than they did against the, their other opponent where they got absolutely annihilated. Mm. Uh, and bearing that in mind, uh, James, what would you reckon here for map one with Overpass? I'll get your prediction on this. Uh, prophecy or reason for that map? Um, well, we've seen that there are some, um, some jitters in terms of performance from reason and with what they, with what the, uh, they said, <laughs> in terms of being afraid to, to play your, your role, I can't pick them as a favorite for any map because that is a massive psychological problem. Yeah. And I don't know, I mean, maybe there's more familiarity, everything's normal now back in the studio, but I mean, that remains to be seen, so I, I, can't, I can't, I have to go against it. So, so who are you gonna go for? I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna press you, which team? Reason or Prophecy today? Prophecy. Prophecy, uh, and what about yourself, SEO? It has to be Prophecy, I, I can't see it going. You're not gonna sit way. on the fence on this one no, today? I think today I'm gonna <laughs> avoid the fence. Okay, so both a Prophecy on that. Well, do you know what? Uh, casting for us today is gonna be Jackie and Snot. Did you know what? Uh, Why not? Hello? Let's mix things up. This, oh. this, I can move. I can come and join. I can do this. I can. I, I'm allowed to. How are you uh, doing? Lovely to see you, gentlemen. Uh, how are you, you seeing too? this one? You heard from James and SEO. Uh, they were saying about uh, prophecy winning that. Can you, either of you, see reason getting it? Um, reason taking it. You mean? Yeah. Potentially. I mean, we saw some shaky play from prophecy last week, of course, being 16-0 by MVS Academy on cash. Problem is, though, the maps, yeah, you can be favoring them in more of a favor to Prophecy. For reason, though, they have the skill, they have the aim. Problem is, do the players perform? Mm. Um, what about yourself, Jackie? I like this death. This is like, it I is like come and lean while you can ask. Is that acceptable? You're going to go posing? Yeah, it's all right, mate. It's quite nice. Okay. You've got to get the form. Like in the, yeah. like in the shirt as well. No? Oh, thank no, you very good. much. I, I need to take Jackie's advice. Just go for the double button. Yeah. Hello. You work your way down. Yeah, uh, well, do you reckon Reason can, can uh, get this win today against Prophecy, who it's, it's off the back of quite a heavy defeat last week? It's possible. The only issue is, I mean, it's not sort of a bit of de uh, debate about this, is obviously Cobblestone. We're looking at it. We're thinking, why is that not coming into the mix? Mm. It's actually because they're not that comfortable. Snod's got some info on that. Yeah, so um, Cobblestone, of course, 
you'd expect reason to pick that one. It's the map that they actually have their only win so far in the Elite Series on versus Epsilon. And actually, that was back when they had Thomas. And now they're obviously subbing in Mace, a player that has zero LAN experience. And um, I was speaking to the team, I was like, so uh, why not Cobblestone? What's been the problem with Cobblestone online, especially UK Masters and other leagues? And they said that Cobblestone is the only map they haven't actually gone over with Mace. So CT side doesn't really know where to fit in. T side is more of the entry player, but if there's no structure, he doesn't really know where his positions are, his timings, or where he needs to be at a certain time of the map, uh, coordinated with his team does throw things off as well. Ah, oh, beautiful. Just Listen, more uh, into that potentially as well. Well, it's going to be a great matchup. Snod, Jack, yep. I'll leave it in your capable hands. If we have a quick look at the maps as well, that'll be beautiful. Us enjoy the first matchup of the series. Have a good enjoy journey, day, mate. mate. I'll go back to my desk. But here it is. Going to be overpass to kick it off. It should yep. be an exciting one, Snods. Obviously, we're looking at it on paper. We're thinking Prophecy most likely should come in here. Right now, in terms of the stand-ins, they've been they looking good. They should do, yeah. I mean, like, what I said about Cobblestone, the fact that Mace isn't comfortable on that map. Mm -hmm. One of the things as well is you have to take into account the fact that Mace has never really been on land. This is his first land experience. He's subbing in for Thomas, a land veteran, a potential staple in the UK scene, a rising talent. The problem is, right, you can play online with all the confidence you want. He is filling in Thomas's shoes as the entry frag. And if your entry fragger lacks confidence, lacks faith in his team as well, suddenly how does that impact your T-sides? Yeah, that's very truthful because this is the thing, sort of, his role is to be that impact fragger early into the round. He needs to be the one to get those openings. And online, he's been actually doing very well. Oh, well We've yeah. seen him yeah. slotting in massively. He's been looking comfortable, but we've never really seen that shine through when he's exactly. here. Talking about online, obviously, Reason Gaming have played over past. They beat Excel in uh, ESL Premiership not too long ago, about two weeks ago. And that was a 16-13 after losing both pistols. And Mace yeah. actually did have a very good game there. But that was online. So, Prophecy uh, winning the knife, I believe. And that means they're probably going to start on that CT side. And we're going to see our Reason favor on the T side. That's the thing, though. For Reason as well, they need to try to get in here early. We've seen this consistently with them. They can be a slow burner. But if they don't get that early fire to them, that's where they really start to lag behind. They can't and, quite build themselves up. And that's what happens when you build a team around the fact that you are individual players. Okay, mm -hmm. They don't really tend to go for the op pick on the T side. Obviously, Kamabanga brings it out on the CT side. T side, they generally go for the 5 AK style of play. They group together, they play 4, 1, or 5 man style of CS. And it'd be interesting to see if they carry that forward as well into this one. Yeah, because that's the thing, sort of more internally is how this team works. It isn't as much structure as it's just sort of a mixed bag. You've got a lot of talent, but the way yep. things work is players are just slotted into a role because they absolutely have to. With Hoodlum, you know, internally, he isn't a fully fledged caller. He no, just, just got forced it. to yeah. his role and made it work. But this is why you see him stepping up individually as well, because he still has a fragging power. And actually, his style of calling fits this reason team so well. Yeah. Initially, when Reason Gaming had their success online, they beat Method 2-0 in the ROG Masters qualifiers, what, four weeks ago, five weeks ago? People were begging the question of, oh, what happened if we just had a fully-fledged leader, like an Imi, like a Nilzinho, for example, someone that brought more structure to the team? Well, on their T sides, it seems like they tend to go for more of that loose start play. Mm -hmm. They spread out, potentially, they go for picks, and when that doesn't happen, they just group together. Either they go for a 4-1 style of CS, hood them towards one side of the map, will throw his nades as a fake, and then the rest of the four people will try and Push in, try and find entries towards the opposite side. Hopefully, Hoodlums cause a rotate and they're one man down for the CT defense. That's really the style of play. Obviously, when you are playing that fake 4 1 style, you need map control. So, on a map like Overpass, you are going to need control of toilets. You're going to need control of banana and be sure to be able to fully fledge those fakes. Because if you haven't got control of connector, you can't make the first rot fast rotation back through connector yeah. towards B if you do the, smoke, uh, the fake towards A. And the same can be said for B. So, for me, Reason Gaming on the T side, are they going to play the map control style at CS? And if so, are they going to be favoring it through B-Short or through Toilets and Mid? And that's the thing as well. They need to actually have their confidence behind them. As we touch on, that is going to be mostly the uh, impactful factor behind them. Because obviously, if they're not going in there absolutely roaring with a firepower up high, yep. blasting from all cylinders, they're going to struggle massively. Because their style of play is that aggressive in your face. Explosive CS. They're not playing strategic, very fast, very heavy. And the thing is, up against Prophecy right now, a team that have proven themselves to have a lot of structure, deep map pool, they've worked their way through, we're seeing them expand their play, but more and more, that's where the issues could arise. Yeah, potentially. Uh, Reason Gaming right now sitting at one point as well. The only win they have, well, I say a win, the only draw they have, map win they had, was versus Epsilon in the first week yeah. on Cobblestone. And initially I was thinking, okay, Reason Gaming, they took a map, potentially an upset, a draw versus one of the uh, potential favorites, one of the finalists you'd expect to be. Could that be their silver lining later on, right? When they do potentially lose 2-0 to Envious, have a hard game versus Prophecy, can they have the upset win versus like an Epsilon, which they did? And then from there, how will they perform versus the UK team? So we saw them last week lose 0-2 to Infuse, the yeah. team that had no points on the board. So the question for me is really, Reason Gaming, it's do or die right now. You're on one point. If you lose 0-2 here, even go for a draw as well, they have to have the 2-0. That's the thing. It was the debate of 
is this a big result for them they can now continue off the back of? Yep. And unfortunately, they haven't been able to. A lot of that does come down to the fact, Thomas, obviously, yep. Thomas is away. He's not here. He's MIA in Cuba, of course. He's busy. If you're watching from home, shout out to Thomas. Absolutely loves it. Already paid his £10. Yep. He's got that £10 deposit for in. Wi-Fi. He's finished up the Spanish bingo, and he is ready for the CS. As we're going to be driving straight into Nod's overpass to kick us off. Let's get into this. So, let's take a look at this one. It's going to be Reason Gaming starting on that CT side. Prophecy winning the knife run, actually opting to start on T. So these guys are going to be wanting to set the pace. They want to be this fast, aggressive style of CS to start and kick things off. It's going to be Utility and P250 on to slap. Apart from that, Fortis of Kevlar. Oh, hello, Cinder. Fortis of Kevlar on the remaining T players. For the CT side, it's going to be hurdling with the Smoke, Flash, and HE Grenade. No kit for that CT side. So if the bomb goes down, that retake's going to be so difficult. Kali actually gets the opener as well on towards Cinder. That's going to be quite an impactful frag. Obviously, Cinder's had to take the role as the main fragger since Thomas has departed. Karma will fire back as well, takes down Arch as he's trying to gain control of Long. Right now, you've got three T players there towards Banana and towards Long. First frag, they're going to favor Karma. Can he get any more? This is looking good so far. The CT defense is showing up when they need to. Karma able to keep him at bay to at least buy his teammates time, but they still haven't spotted out the bomb. And Slap does a little bit of damage before he sneaks off. He does indeed. So, one minute five on the clock right now. Prophecy, a man disadvantage for them. Come up, hang up on a two frags himself. Now it's down to Calais. Can he equalize the numbers? Oh, Calais takes the fight through. Stunts. He's trying to get the entries. Actually, they do. Kola and Calais come up huge as they pop the heads of Mason Hoodlum. They've now got complete control of the site. No kick for the retakers, but well. they need a fast frag here. Calais will dispatch a prey. Turn this into a one versus three. And there we go. Pistol round one for Prophecy on their T side overpass. It's so crucial to win that T pistol. Reason being is, depending on how much reason getting forced into this buy right now, round number two. Are they going to have fighters of Kevlar? Are they going to buy Scout to come up hanging? Will they have enough money to bring in the AWP into play for the first buy round? And already you can see come up hanging right now buying the Deagle has $1,400 in his bank account, which means he will have enough for the AWP. So we are going to be seeing an AWP coming out from come up hanging in round number four. But for now, Prophecy, three SMGs and two Ks, two AKs will fill out their buy. For them right now, versus the quasi buy of Reason Gaming, try and have four stay alive, three stay alive, stack up as much cash as you can on these pistols, on these SMGs, sorry. No Mac 10. Usually, you see the Mac 10 player be the probe for information. Go towards one of the sites, see if the CTs are stacking there towards A or B. Instead, though, they're just going to play the normal default, the normal anti EQ. You do an overpass where you send three players towards long, you flash over long, you molly towards tree, and eventually you have control of A long and toilets. And then, following that, you just execute them towards the site. Set themselves up right now as they do have that utility. Yep, smoke towards CT stairs. Probably going to molly truck as well. Come up hanging out towards default site, has no Kevlar, so these SMGs are going to rip through him. Let's see what Karma can do here with the Deagle. Can he somehow start to ward them off? Unfortunately, two men will go down as they take control of the site. Hoodlum try and respond as well. We'll take the head off of Arch, but it seems like the damage has already been done. Exactly, that three versus four now. It's looking like Reason Gaming going to be throwing in the towel into this one. Going to be saving their Kevlar, helmet, and pistols, the CZs. Strong round from Prophecy. Obviously, they only found one frag. Oh, sorry, two kills. Oh, sorry, make it three, actually. And all three of those frags were on the egg. So, no extra cash for the SMGs. Obviously, Arch being the entry fragger, first one to die. Had the UMP, it's not really the end of the world if he does fall. So it's going to be a strong round for Prophecy. Four players staying alive, which means they're going to only have to drop over one SMG, one MAC-10 towards Arch that did fall. Pretty good round so far as they work their way through. Not going to get too much cash off the back of that, though, as the kills go. Only coming out with the rifles. Luckily enough, Cinder and Mace will get away. Exactly that. So bomb does explode. We go into round number three now. And there should be another clean round here for Prophecy. Obviously, we have two players with the CZs and Kevlar. Are they going to group together towards a site, have the pistols, or sorry, the armored players go to one, towards B, and then have your un-Kevlar, you know, USP players go towards A, or are you going to do a four-man stack, a five-man stack? Are you going to have the two CZ players play towards connector with armor? Let's see what they do. Let's see what Prophecy do as well, if they go for a B rush or a fast uh, rush towards A with these SMGs. Now we have the Mac 10 onto Arch. He can just run in first, see if they're stacking a site, and if they're not, the remaining players, the rallying troops can fall behind him. Easy way for him to just farm his way. Nice stack coming up from Reason. They're going to try to catch him off guard. Just play together. They are all situated like that. Yep, it's actually going to be five players from the T side all going towards A. Got quicks there towards Connector. No players towards Monster, so they are going to be expecting a stack towards the B bomb site. Still just holding for the meantime. Obviously, the play coming through. You can see Prophecy not wanting to run any risks because they do clear their angles. Exactly. One of the issues here is you go towards middle and you could have four CT players just grouped behind mid, waiting for a flashbang from a teammate. All of you are blind, and suddenly the USPs are so effective versus the blind enemies. But instead, it's going to be a good read here from Prophecy. Quicks, the only man really in potential danger, as the CTs have given up the A site and are stacking three players towards Connector as a four. Makers play, though. Going to go for the contact peak. The thing is, Mace does have the angle covered with the CZ. 
Locked and loaded. Even he goes down, a quick trade should be coming back through. Nice splash bang goes over to allow him to beat. He will find oh. the first rag and the second. Nicely done from Quicks there, but eventually falls to Cinder that can scavenge the weapon. Four versus three now. Still in favor of Prophecy. Arch with a MAC-10. He can lose his gun here. He can try and find the frag, make it into a four versus two. She does it because Cinder they're having the Kevlar will find the frag and turn this into a three versus three. Cinder is low. Sword Hunter Kali now towards toilets. Nice damage done, even if they do lose out off the back of this point. Kali gonna try and strike though. We'll find that frag back on towards Cray fairly easily. Here's Hoodlum in the back line though. Just gonna pop his head out. Try and do a little bit of damage. Cause some commotion as he will strike at the right time. It oh. fires out a Deagle round. Will take down Slap. Oh my god! As he takes down Kolor as well. This is huge! Potentially they can actually start to pick this one up as he makes his play straight towards Bomb. No kits play with those nods. So he needs to do it right now. We'll jump on it. Try and force the face. And unfortunately, Calais not going to buy into his mind games. We'll just hold his angle, peek out, and eventually take him down with a rifle. Still, the fact that they found four kills onto the T's will impact their economy potentially. Hoodlum there feeling warmed up and ready for the remainder of this game. It's going to be going into the first buy round now. We could be seeing the AWP come into play as well from Karma Panga. And we do indeed. 5,700 bought on from him. So he's going to be having Kevlar, AWP, and a smoke grenade. Apart from that, though, it's going to be four and fours to fill out the rest of that CT buy. Prophecy now, first buy round for them. They're ditching away those SMGs. Four AKs and one AWP into the hands of Kola. We saw him step up so many games so far. Really the star player for me with the AWP. It's going to be four players grouping outside Monster. Let's see what Slap can do. He's waiting for the smoke, the Molotov. He's going to try and get contact headshot towards barrels and then flood the site with a man advantage. Yeah, needs to hit with the aggression here. Open it up massively. Will think his way through. Kali gets the opener, actually. It's going to be Arch to respond as well. Takes down Mace Cinder. He's the frontline infantry to defend the site. He actually strikes at the right time. They were unaware of his location as he's able to work his way through. Only one member, unfortunately. Three versus two now. Kali is fairly low HP onto 34. Great has the kit and all the utility. M4 for him. Kamapanga towards. Actually, Bank, I think Kamapang is going to be saving. No, he is towards heaven, sorry. Trying to see if he can spot out a player crossing back towards site. Trying to play it in their own time. They do have a little bit of utility left to play. The Molotov is going to come down, though. This really burns a lot of time off. Cray can't strike efficiently at this point. Karma going to root over. Will miss the opening shot, unfortunately, at this point. They might as well just call it. Exactly that. Two players staying alive. Obviously, the round loss bonus now will be 3,400 after losing four rounds on the trot. So, I mean, Cray could drop. Let's take a look at the money. So yeah, you will get 3,000 points to the bank, so Karma and Kray can both drop M4s. The question is, do they go for the quasi buy, or will they even have two rifles to save? Yeah, it's very true. Springs can try and go for the attack. We'll get himself the elevated angle, actually takes down Kray, but Karma is able to respond. That changes everything. If you had two players stay alive, we could have seen the drops come through, maybe? Mm -hmm. Instead, though, with only one player staying alive, they're going to go for the quasi buy, I imagine, into this one. Why is he just knifed someone? Has he? Yeah, there was a, a team kill on Prophecy. Really? Yeah, there was a team kill. He just knifed him oh, back. I didn't see that. I was after your gorgeous after face. Kill came through. Oh. Well, I did wonder what that was. But. Yeah, anyway, it's going to be the quasi buy coming out from Reason Gaming. Come up, playing a save in the orb. He has to get aggressive here, try to find the first frag if he wants a chance for Prophecy to lose the round. We can bring to the table here, obviously, right now. Craig going to go for the early information play. Not going to get too much of that. No real audio cues there. Yeah, Prophecy right now, they know there's an orb in play. You can see them playing slow. They expect. Karma to either peek towards Monster, that's why you have Kelly there just holding, see if he will peek. And as well, if you have the AWP, you're going to be going towards three places. Long, middle, or B. Kelly's holding towards B. You have Colin now trying to see if Karma will go for a cheeky mid-peak. But instead, obviously we saw what Prophecy did on the Antiquos. They went towards A long two times in a row. That's why Karma Pang is there towards long. He thinks they're going to do the same Antiquo, but instead, Jack, they're just going to do a mid-default. Smoke towards front toilets. Prophecy may be expecting a better buy than they're actually against. Map control Cray as well, just can try to play around the smoke. Potentially could get a lot of information at the back of this, but Kolo does have the angle covered, Snods. He does indeed. Still a five versus five. 55 seconds left on the clock right now. The T's have no control of the map. The bomb is down for some reason. Fairly strange because the AWP is now alone with the bomb towards toilets. So, bomb collected, and actually Cray may hear this. And if he spots him going back down, connected with the bomb, that could give all the information he needs. But unfortunately for Cray, he spots towards long. The first right goes in favor of reason, though. Five versus four. He's able to take one man down with his CZ. Not Kali that is going to fall. This could hinder them, but the push is starting to come through. They have that utility over as well. Cinder actually in a prime location to do damage, but it's Mace that strikes, finds the headshot back on the ward. Slap Kola as well chimes in as he takes him down. Hoodlum trying to relive that previous round with his Deagle. Kola will not allow it. Three versus two now. Cray towards shot. Good find a frag, but Quicks is ready for it. Comes in from short, finds the opening headshot. Actually does take him down as they're now left in a two versus two. Potential into the round at this point. Exactly that. Let's see now. Come up, hang out towards heaven. He has to find the frag here. Quicks catches up Craig. They saw down to the shoe. Too late at this point. Quicks has the angle cover. He can just spam into him. Just go for the pre-fire. And that should call it off. Exactly. Come up, hang out. They'll be going back, retreating away. Going to be saving the AWP into the very next day. 
Well, I say day. Next round is going to be round number six. As Prophecy take a five to zero lead, another buy will come in for Reason Gaming. Indeed, they're working their three right now. Prophecy looking good so far. Obviously, this is a form we expect to see. Reason, we've seen a lot of struggles coming out, more so on their CT half overpass in recent form factor. I mean, yeah, their T side's strong. Yeah. Like every single UK team, weak CT sides and strong T sides. Obviously, it's not hard to have good aim. Mm -hmm. You can play your pugs, you can play your DM. Doesn't matter where you're from. Your aim can always be improved on. The problem is it's teamwork, it's communication, it's cohesion, it's rotates that are so important and impactful on that CT side. Come up hanger there on your screens, the AWPA for the Reason side. Anyway, enough of that. It's going to be going into round number six. The second buy now. We saw Prophecy have a very commanding lead on that first one when they went for the concert play towards B. Are they going to try and repeat that success? So, AWP on both sides. Kolo wielding that one and come up hanger once again wielding the AWP towards that CT side. It's going to be quicks again towards connector. And a three-man default towards the A site, and it's going to be Kala as your lurk towards B. A very standard T default here. You smoke towards front toilets, you molly banana, you flash up, and you slowly take control of mid. Once you have control of mid, you can do the fakes, you need connector. So, it's all down to map control. That was my question in the preface, and so far it's delivering. Come up, hang a holding towards party, but you can see that smoke comes in. The molly will come towards banana, and now he has to aid his teammate here. We like utility raining through the skies. Carmen needs to go in at the right time, trying to play around it. Will peek out, unfortunately, his head gets knocked straight off, slapped, absolutely working his way through. Five versus, sorry, four versus three now. Hits onto Mason Hoodlum, so the CTs can play for retake if they want to. Bomb still towards playground though, so they still have a minute left on the clock to try and find another entry and turn this into a four versus two. Right now though, Reason Gaming, they need the next kill to go in their favor. Otherwise that could be all she wrote. It's gonna be Kale once again towards Monster. Mace here, close as well. I don't think he's actually peeking out. He's waiting for someone to just push into his crosshair and trying to find an easy frag. 40 seconds left on the clock right now. Look how far back Cinder is. He has no information towards mid. This is where a fake could be so easily thrown. Instead, though, the CTs are going to take a risk towards B. It's looking like they played this one smart. 30 seconds left, and here comes the execute in the smokes. Push coming through. Mace trying to ward them off. We'll actually get the opening frags. He's able to take down Cali. Things get a little bit awkward now. Hoodlum trying to play around the pole, but it's not meant to be, Snods, unfortunately. Slap right now, four frags for himself. Gonna try to go for the ace, but Cinder's looking like he might be saving this one instead. Oh no, he's actually towards heaven. One versus three. Is there a chance? Likely at this point. Cinder, limited utility, no real time. Actually, does peek out, takes the head of Kolor. That's a nice opening frag, gives him potential into the round as both of the remaining T's are fairly low. He has the Molotov as well, so he can try and get that Molly out towards short, but he's making an awful lot of noise as he makes his approach through. Molotov does go out to keep them at bay as he peeks out, but he's not aware of Slap's location, but it doesn't matter. He finds the headshot, Pick takes him kit. down. Oh. He's got the kit, there's so much into this round. Quicks, is he aware of his location? Just waiting for him to peek out, but Quicks plays it smart, peeks out. I was about to down. say, Cinder had no kit there for the chance of the one versus three was impossible, but you saw he found that frag towards Pillar. He retrieved the kit as well. It seemed so perfect for him into that scenario. And look at that spray transfer there from Slap. And of course, the 2k towards that B bomb site. The two CTs just lining up, making it nice and easy. The balls will come in. I believe that's from Reason. And they are about 4,000 across the board, 8,000 into Karma Pang's bank. So he can drop over an M4 to Hoodlum. We could be seeing a 5 M4 buy, Jack. Problem is, you have 5 M4s, but you've only got 4,000 in the bank. You can buy M4, Kevlar. Flashbang. Can't even afford smoke onto a few of these players. And smokes are so important on the CT side. Either to smoke off mid to delay the push, to smoke off banana with 50 seconds left to again hold off the push. You want the clock to go down as low as possible on your CT side with a pass. Yeah, they're in a massive deficit right now. You can see as well, this is the thing with reason. A very emotional team, much like a lot of UK teams, it's more of a standpoint at this you know, this time. They need that energy, and if they do stir with a slow start, that's what they really can't find their foot in. The reason for the passion and the frustration, the anger, and it shows, I believe it's the pressure they put on themselves. Mm -hmm. All of these UK players, even myself included, everybody wanted to be that one team that changed it all. The first team to break through the UK and make it international. But so far, I've only had players like Smuya, Def, Surreal, that have crossed the seas and gone towards some foreign counter-strike. Apart from that though, the UK team, we haven't really been seeing a UK team, bar obviously the win from Easy Skins and then the endpoint win versus Flipside. Train deep, mate. He's like the alt skills there. Cheers, mate, cheers, mate. Lovely map from Well done, got it then. Anyway, talking about Premier, I've played, uh, I've played Arch in Premier and he 16 2 me on overpass. So hopefully, Reason Gaming a little bit more than me on this map. We'll have to wait and see if that is going to be the case. First time Reason have actually used some aggression into the round, though, Snods taking that early long control. Exactly that. Once again, the exact same default coming out from the side of Prophecy. Flash comes in and see if we can take it. They do take the fight through. Karma actually gets the opening frag as they're allowed to fall back now. Slap, though, gets the trade frag. It's going to be a 4 versus 4 and low HP onto Karma Panger as well. So far, 
so good for Prophecy as they win the early exchange. They've got four versus four, which does favor the T's anyway. I'll explain that in just a second. Plus the fact that Karma Pang is 50, 15 HP. So, why does the four versus four favor the terrorist side? Think of it like this. On your CT side, you have so much ground to cover. You have two sites, so you have to split up your default, your defense, sorry. Two players towards A, it's gonna be Karma Pang and Hulum towards the A site. And then you have Mace and Cinder towards B. So it's two players towards B, two players towards A, but the terrorists they can group together. It can be a four versus two to one, one towards one of these sites. That's why people do say equal exchanges do favor the terrorist side. So four versus four now. 45 seconds left on the clock. They do have good utilities well into the arsenal of the T side. Prophecy could go for a fake towards the A site. Or Slap could just throw some nades, trying to find a frag towards the B side, but look at the stack hit coming from Cinder and Mace. They're playing retake as well. Their job right now is to find one frag, turn it into a four versus three, and play the retake. The problem is they have one kit, one smoke grenade, sorry, two smoke grenades, and one Molotov. So a lack of utility for the for the CT side in case this does become a retake. It's all down to Cinder now, but look, he's not even peeking. Cinder, wrong time, and unfortunately will be his downfall. He does peek out now, trying to straight, but he's not going to work out. Arch takes it off instantly. Nice opener. Mace as well, warded off as the Molotov is ablaze right in front of him, and they're keeping everyone at bay with the utility they have. Reason have to give up on this one. Mace picks up the kit, but he will throw in the tower. It's going to be the save coming out from Reason Gaming. They've lost seven rounds of the trot now, so they will be able to pop into the next one. You can see that on the screens. The money is low, but they will get $3,400 as their round loss bonus. So they can drop Kray and Cinder M4s. They can have another bind to the next one. At this point, we have to see risks. We have to see risks, sorry. A stack towards Connector, try and find the frag onto Quicks. Break up the T side of attack. If you have control of Connector with the CT side, suddenly it's harder because for Prophecy, you'll have all those uh, four or three players in the default. Forced and tunneled towards A. That's way, that way you know where the, C, the T's are. Also means you won't be playing versus a fake as well because if you have control of Connector, it's so much harder to throw smokes and then run all the way around T-spawn. But yeah, I have to see a risk come out from the CT side right now. Reason Gaming, what are they going to do? A four-man stack towards B maybe and leave Karma to solo up on the A site. That could be a good strat. Could go for some aggression towards long. We saw them do it last time, but they went four for four and Karma Panga was too low HP. They need to have a five versus four exchange in their advantage or stack towards the site and risk something because so far, playing standard CS, they're losing it heavy, well, very heavily versus Prophecy. Yeah, we're seeing that consistently. That's the thing right now. We spoke about how important confidence is for them. They're playing that aggressive CT half, but they're not bringing the aggression to the table. Playing from the far back angles, trying to play for trades, but it's just not working out for them. Constantly being left in a situation where in the, uh, the Battle of Attrition, they physically cannot retake the site, force the fallback. They don't have the cash play over as well, so we're not seeing that orb come out. Mm. Right now, Karma needs to step up. He has to fill the shoes of Thomas in that orping role for the openers. We've seen Reason Gaming on full buys lose in very dramatic fashion. Right now, there's no AWP in play for the CT side. Kits onto three players, Famas onto Cray. So even then, they're lacking firepower. Quick's a shot holding the door. He's trying to see if Stender's going to go for a jump peek. But instead, it's gonna, still going to be a five versus five. One minute left on the clock as we're going to round number eight. Prophecy, one round away from all we already winning the half, eight to zero. At this point, the best half we could see from Reason Gaming on the CT side is an eight to seven. But Jack, I don't think it's going to happen. So far, we haven't really been seeing too many close rounds. We had the one versus three from Cinder that was turned into a one versus one, but still, that was a one versus three scenario. All these rounds have gone in favor of Prophecy. Reason Gaming have to step up. Cray, one of the shining stars on this Re Reason Gaming side, usually. Let's see what we can do. Those smokes will go towards B. That smoke's yeah. like heaven and breach. And fake. now you have the fake from Kali as well. This could force the rotation from Karma. This could be very important here if they play it right. Kali as well comes in with two massive opening frags and they've completely bypassed Kray. There it is. Karma Panga rotating towards B. It's all down to Kray, but with the Famas he'll lose the duel. Karma Panga now back towards stairs trying to see if he can find the frag, but already in the two versus four. What can he really do? Trying to do some damage as he will peek out. Finds a little bit, but it's not quite enough. We'll eventually force all on Cinder. He's in the back line. Look how low these T side players are, but they're in prime time after plants. They're ready for this. Cinder. Finds the first kill, we'll take down Arch, but he's got to bide his time. Once again, Cinder in the one versus three for a chance for Reason Gamer to claw this one back. Bomb planted, has a kit, double flashbang, can't go for a smoke defusal. All down to just peeking and finding these frags. Peeking out, working his way through. No one really there to deal with at this point. He's also being hunted. Quicks is going to be coming up from the rear. And it won't even matter. Kale will be the one to take him down and Prophecy keep their streak going. After eight rounds, it's already going to be Prophecy winning the half as a bare minimum. Eight to zero will be the scoreline. We saw the incredible fake that came out from Prophecy. You can smoke towards Heaven and Bridge and center side, all from outside toilets. This is the problem, right? Cray was close towards toilets. How did you not hear them pulling the grenades? As soon as he heard them throwing smokes, as soon as Karma Panga calls the smokes are not on A, you have to anticipate the fake towards B. But as well, Calais finding two frags, two entries towards the B site alone. 
simply isn't good enough. Yeah, we've seen that B-Fake come out quite a lot from Prophecy as well in the games they played on Overpass, and they do like to bring to the table. We saw it from Epsilon last week as well. Mm -hmm. So it's not that uncommon. You have to be anticipating all the players that could come out, especially from a side like Prophecy. They had such an embarrassing loss last week, losing 16 to 0. This week they have something to prove. Karma though, he's proving everything right now as he whips out the Deagle, we'll find a dirty shot back on towards that. And the bomb's down in a massive location, wide in the open. Unfortunately, they can't quite hold the tees off to give them the advantage. Exactly that, bomb switch towards a long. Nice frag there for Karma Panga, but I believe Quicks will land the shot and he does just that. It's going to turn into a four versus three. A glimmer of hope there as Reason Gaming had the advantage, but instantly it's going to be brought back to a four versus three in Prophecy's favor. 8-0 currently, and the quality by now for Reason Gaming. The only person with Kevlar on that CT side is Mace. Kevlar, Smoke, and a CZ. Apart from that, Jack, it's just Hoodlum with the Deagle once again. Cray with the 5-7, but they have no armor. We saw what happened versus Cray towards Sewers when he had no Kevlar. Let's see if he can get the dropper, though. Yeah, this is massive. He's got his ears on. He'll be aware of their location. Can find the frag back on towards Cray. Scavenges the AK as well, but meanwhile to boards B, this is what Mace needs to go Hughes Has to keep them at bay, buy his teammates time to rotate over if they want to invest into this round. Yeah, Molotovs will push him back towards B short. He's given up the site, and that should mean the retake being nigh impossible as they have no kits on that CT side. They have a Molotov onto Cray, but unfortunately, Hoodlum should go down towards CT lower, and eventually he does. Three versus two right now. The T's have control of the all CT side of the map. They have Heaven, they have control of lower. No chance here. Cray could save the AK into the next round, but even then, you're 9 0 now. Arch as well. Unfortunately, we'll actually go down. Mace finds the. One bullet frag with the uh, CZ there, takes him swiftly down, but it's all on Cray. Up close and personal, being very risky with the AK-47, but actually does find the headshot as he now roams his way in. No kit, so he needs to make the play right now. Taps the bomb. Kohler is not going to fall for his uh, shenanigans, though. Calate will just hold and peek out the right time. Could save the AWP here. Actually, does grab that one. Retrieves the AWP into round number 10, but right now, Prophecy 9-0. Look at the frags there from Calate. 14-3 for him. Right now, the top frag on the CT side is Cinder. What's worrying as well is the fact that usually you favor the CT side over boss. So far, the slow defaults from Prophecy. There's been too much for Reason Gaming to handle. They do the slow defaults, they take the one versus one jewels, and they win every single fight. They're finding entries towards B, they're finding the first kill towards mid. Simply put, Reason Gaming, they need a crossfire, they need a counter flash setup, they need something where they're not showing their head directly to the aim and crosshairs or prophecy. They need a, a good setup, a crossfire, again, the counter flash, have someone spotting towards monster from pillar, have a flashbang pinned from graffiti maybe, something to catch these T players off guard because right now the CT defense is falling flat. Yes, indeed. They can't quite bend efficiently, just getting destroyed into these rounds as uh, some ringing going on into the rounds. They will take their fight through those knobs. Fast round explosion towards that B bomb site. Mace actually has gone uncovered. They haven't realized his location plan around the pole and around the smoke. This could be huge if he times it correctly. Does speak out, but it's short lived. Quicks will stub it out as soon as possible. So, three versus three. That's so the door equalizes the numbers. Bomb is still towards B short, but all three of these CT players are rotating in through lower at heaven. No one flanking from B short, and the boost comes in. Massive counter boost going through. Calais allowed to push in. Flash for him as well. They're playing it smart. They shouldn't be aware of his location. Karma will actually get taken down because of this as well. And it falls into Hoodlum and Cray. He's in an elevated angle. He can fire down from above. Should be an easy spray on towards these CTs at the very least. But Cray will strike at the right time. Now goes for his push in towards the bomb site. Left in a one versus one. Could be massive if he picks this one up, but still no kit. He has to react soon. Kolor unaware of his location. The timing could be there. As he starts to back off, the flick comes out. Prophecy. 10 rounds on the trot, no faults just yet. Last week, it was a 16-0. We're infused, sorry, not infused. <laughs> Envious Academy yeah. demolished Prophecy on cash. And right now, we could be facing a complete turnover, where this week, Prophecy could be 16 0 reason. Obviously, that's quite a bold statement to make right now, only 11 rounds in. Then again, 10 to 0, but none of these rounds have really been close, apart from that one versus one. Nevertheless, there will be the 4AK and Ops set up on that T side. Sending out flash comes in towards mid. They're doing something different, Jack, but is it too late? It's true. Switching it up. Timing could definitely be off. They go for the information play earlier. They actually do not slap down 20 HP, and they've actually got some map control to play with. This is the first time we've seen any real confidence apart from the long control rounds. Where was this 5 0 down, 6 0 down? Why are they bringing it out now when they're already double digit disadvantage? 0 to 10. Reason Gaming pull out all the stops right now, try and get one frag, or sorry, one round of the board. But talking about frags, Kolo finds the first onto Cinder. 
It's going to be a one-man advantage already. He said it was the catalyst that could have potentially got around in their favor. Cray actually spots out one-man hoodlum strikes as well. Slap is very low. That should be an easy kill to pick up. And Cray, of course, will do so. Quicks and Kale, the dynamic duo left. What can the Swedish superstar do here as he will get into the back line once again? Four versus two right now. Quicks coming in through Banana. If he finds an entry here towards Karma Panga, towards a long Cray just cleared Banana and Toilet. So maybe Karma Panga won't be expecting Quicks just to sneak up behind him. He could pop up. One easy kill, one man down, try and get them back to a manageable situation. Cray does have to cross fire, covered though, so it is not meant to be. Yep, didn't hear him scope as well. It's going to put Kalle now in a one versus four. So, right now, the star of the show, already 16 kills for him. Can he make it 20? He would need to go huge. Have to be a one man army to try and open up this round. Peaks through, spots out Mace's head, but can't quite do it. Mace will take him down with his spam. Reason, look at the first round on the board. All of the back of them going for an early confidence play. They work it out. Cray went to went for the aggression, was able to have to drop massive impact frags early into the round. So, by the time Reason Gaming find one round on the board, they're still in a nine round deficit. This isn't a 5-1, a 6-1 scoreline, Jack. Prophecy already on 10. Reason Gaming now, they're prone to being reset. This is the problem. Prophecy win this round. Reason Gaming have reset their round loss bonus. This could be awful for the economy of the CT side. And once again, it's going to be Reason Gaming throwing the same smokes. But I don't think Prophecy are going to be his caught off guard. It's true. This time they are not spooked by what is occurring. Karma as well. Ready? He is getting information off the back of this as he's pushed up so, so far. He can hear everything that's occurring with the T's deep towards mid right now. He has got contact warp scope through. Takes down Slap and also spots out the bomb because this early Monotov in to try and keep them at bay. But gets caught with his pants down. He's fumbling. Luckily enough, the backup is there. Cray can respond as he finds the headshot. But Cray goes down. Kolo spray with the last bullet. Two versus three right now. Low HP onto Kolo. Only found two frags himself. Picks up the AWP as well. So the, HP, the low HP won't matter too much. They have the sight as well. Mace has to rotate in through connector and have a flank because right now you could have a very good setup from the T side if they get in towards the afterplant positions towards toilets. Quick snap pushing towards bank, catching these CT players off guard. Quick snap. Oh, could have strengthened the right time, would have able to get a massive opener into the round, but it all in the hands of Kolor now. He has to do some damage with the orb, peeking out, trying to take the fight as he just has to. He needs to create this one versus one. Too much utility soaring through the skies, he can't quite think. And he will be overwhelmed by Hoodlum. Crucial there. The reason Gaming found the second round, if they had lost that, had their money reset, we could have been seeing a 14 to 1 scoreline. Mm. Still then, two rounds on the drop. So far, so good from them. What's different from uh, Prophecy so far is the fact that they're sending they're sending uh, two towards Connected this time. Usually when they had so much dominance, they were sending three towards mid. They were doing the slow default towards Toilets, Molling towards Banana, Flashing, having control of Toilets, Long and Banana. And now, finally, Reason Gaming are playing more aggressive. They're finally starting to warm up, get used to the environment, I guess. And they're trying to push back the tees. Right now, what do you think Josh is saying as the coach, interim coach while uh, Rom's away? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing sort of with Josh as well. He right now is more of your sort of pump up sort of type vibe. He just wants to yeah, get on back. Mace, I mean, you've got, you've got yeah. someone like Mace with his zero experience standing in for the star player for the reason side. What right now could Josh be saying to him? Not too sure, mate. The old uh, well, Joshy Rav Rav. Yeah, I mean, if I was in Mace's position right now, what would I want to hear? I'd like to hear, it doesn't matter. Who cares? Something, I know that might sound ridiculous, but pressure is the worst thing in the scenario for some of that experience. Right now, you're two to 10 down. Your job for Reza Gaming is to get the one, one draw. For the rest of this game, just play loose. Play your own game, stop overthinking. We see that his rotations have been off. He's been playing close towards Monster every single round. Change it up, play it like it's a face it almost. Relax and just enjoy the moment because he's overthinking and so far, hasn't really been delivering. We've seen so many entries towards the B-bomb side. Anyway, though, Prophecy changing things up on their Rico. Going to be going fast towards Connector, towards the A-side. Cray now checks the way towards Banana, halting the push, but has the M4. Wolf fall back as the Monotov keeps them at bay shortly, but they get a lot of information over. They're just going to try and hit the site with everything they've got. Karma, this is the opening shot, and they want to try and keep these blocks as far away as they can. Do not let them get into close range, where they might actually be effective at this point. Cray should get an easy spray down here as he comes through. Karma does damage as well. That is going to be the mopped up. Two casualties, though, for the CTs. Yeah, exactly. That's still the CT money is like. If there's low money for the Reason Gaming side, once it goes to um, round number th uh, 14 or 13, sorry. If Reason's money is low in this round, Prophecy then win the next round coming here. If they break the money on the final round, that could be the catalyst for an 11 4 scoreline. But let's see. The money is. Mm, it's fairly low. It's fairly low. Two players would need drops, so. 
If Prophecy win this one, say they go towards B or they take A side again and we see saves come out. We need those players with 2,000, 3,000 in the bank right now to be saving in case the worst does happen. Anyway, though, round number 14 is going to be the Orb once again onto Karmapanga. Four M4s to aid and back him up. On the T side, we're seeing a 5 AK setup right now. No Orb until the start. Colo. Colo, sorry. Anyway, though. We've seen contact plays, grouping plays from Prophecy. It seems like they had the most success when they grouped together. 4 1 style CS. We had Calais towards the other half of the map. And you played the trade game towards the sites. Even if you lost the first guy, you had a good trade. You made a 4 versus 4. You need good spacing as well. Have the T players close together so they're all in a position where they can trade each other. So, 1 minute 5 left on the clock. It's still a 5 versus 5. Sending so it's tagged up a little bit through the wood, but then again, Sonia is still alive and kicking towards the B bomb site. We're seeing another default here towards connector from the T side. Slow play towards toilets. But they haven't got control of banana or toilets just yet. CT is playing so passive as well. Look what Karma and Cray are. They're back towards the site. This could be an issue here, Jack, because playing so far back, they will have zero information. A fake could be so easy. Look what Kali is as well towards B short once again. Could we be seeing another fake towards A? And if so, will it work again? Karma is in position there. The difference factor is obviously he does have the AWP in his arsenal ready to try and keep them back. The push will be coming through. Fake actually does go off as well. Kali's able to take down Cinder. No rotate has been forced. They hold their angles. Cray needs to be such an impact player into the round. Karma's able to get away with a frag as well. Takes down Kolor. Karma, another frag for him. That's a hat trick coming out for Harmer. Easy kills with the AWP as he shuts them down. Big round there for Reason Gaming to win. You can see Cinder's fired up as well. He knows exactly how important this 10-5 scoreline is on their CT side. If they make this 10-5, win the pistol. Don't allow the T's to, uh, sorry, win versus the Force by win versus the Eco as well. We could be seeing a 10-8 scoreline as long as Reason King win this following round, the final round, and then win that ever so important pistol. That's a shot kill. as well, yeah, incredible. Nevertheless, it's going to be the 5 UMP bar from Prophecy. Don't really see this one too often. Before, on the CT side, you'll see this before the UMP nerf came in. But now, you see it here on the T side overpass from Prophecy. After the nerf, mid to long range, UMP does about seven to eight bullets to kill someone. But luckily, they're playing this one close. They're going to be opting towards to go towards that B bomb site with their lack of firepower. They're going to be lining up some smokes now, and the execute comes in. Early explosion here out towards the site. Cinder playing up close and personal. Struggles a little bit, only finds one kill, but there's a lot of damage making them easier to take down for Hoodlum. Very squishy now as they have taken control of the site. Only two men left standing on that T side after the nade of Karma rolls in and takes them down. Karma as well, ready to strike. Two versus two right now. Kamapanga has the full utility and the kit. Crow right now. Kevlar, no utility. The flash comes in towards lower. He takes one down oh, and a second as well. An easy one tap with the UMP. Pops ahead of Cray. As they do get that 11th round on the board. Once again, another good strat there from Prophecy. We saw the good uh, execution from the fake towards B. The smokes from toilets towards the B-bomb site to sell the fake for Calais. Right there, we saw the Astralis take towards the B-bomb site. You smoke off. The first initial part of bridge, you molly towards graffiti, you molly towards lower, you smoke off heaven, you have a flashbang for monster and a flashbang for water and the site. What that is, is it causes the T's to be funneled in towards water where the flashbangs do lie. That's why we saw those CT players on that big bomb site completely blind and then flooded by the CT, the, the T, sorry, with those SMGs. Just took over the site. In a three versus two, yes, they made it two versus two. The problem was such a good flashbang and they retook lower. And as Arch retook lower, he found the two frags as well. What's crucial is the difference we see between the UK teams and the international teams in retakes and afterplants. If that was a UK team in that afterplant, they would have stayed on the site, completely scared, completely terrified, and would have just waited for the CTs to push in. What we saw from Prophecy was they took initiative, and they took their stance. They said, okay, two versus two, we've only got SMGs, we're not going to win this without the utility as well. We need to take a portion of the map, either have control of B-Short, have control of Monster, or take control of CT lower and they were worried that there might be a CT player towards the flank. That's why they thought, okay, let's flush towards lower and have a two versus one on that CT player. But luckily for Arch, both of the remaining CTs were there. Anyway, second pistol right now. This is so important for Reason to win. They have to take this one, and already a good play from them as they flood towards B. So we're on to Calais USP. Welcome out towards the B bomb site, and they will find their way through, rubbing their feet all over it, Calais. Forced to try and fall back. Actually does get the opening headshot though, taking down Makes. That could be quite a powerful kill into late round right now as they have massive advantage over the T's. So they get into better positions. They're just pre-firing their way through. Cinder actually going up close personal. Will keep the CT's forced back. They can't efficiently take the fight towards the site right now. Hoodlum does one better as well as he pops the head of Slap. 
out. Kolor risking it all as he peeks quite exuberantly here from Short, trying to slip his way in. Karma has the angle covered. It's not really going their way, but Quicks will come into play. Finds the headshot back on Wardson. The leaves them in a two versus three, but look how low the teams are. It only takes one round to take them down. Quicks will find a second kill, but it looks like it's going to be too late. They don't have the kit. No time either. Arch just has to try and go for the suicide play at this point. Massive pistol run there for reason to win on the T side. Five to 11 now will be the scoreline. They have to win versus the Force by. They have to win versus the Eco as well, coming out of Prophecy. If they can manage that, get to 7-11, win that first bar round, have Prophecy's economy back against the ropes, constantly having to use all their investment into each and every round, that puts Reason in a position where they can break the money of the CT side round after round after round and force the Corsi buys, force the Ecos, get those three rounds on the board. That's how they're going to have the comeback into this game. Into this round, though, the aggression coming back through. Obviously, for Prophecy, needs to try and play a bit of Shock and All Star round. Can't yep. efficiently play this one out of standard. So it's going to be a heavy stack towards Long from Prophecy. The general, the consensus for your anti ecos on overpass, on your T-Side assisted Molotov towards Tree, flush over Long, take control of Long and Toilets, and then execute towards a Molly truck, uh, smoke off banks, smoke off stairs, and flood the site. But already, it's going to be a very slow play from Reason Gaming. Quite scared here in Timon as they're expecting a push from the Prophecy, and expecting the CT aggression, especially after how good of a half Prophecy had. Anyway, it's going to be the three players from that CT side. Actually make it four now as Slap joins the ranks. Four players towards Toilets. Mace here. Gets all the information he needs. Gets a nice dink up as well as Archers jump around. Does give their location away. The flashbang comes over. They peek at the right time. They play it smart as they peek together. Karma trying to ward them off. We'll find a couple of frags. Oh he just down for the AK. Karma ripping his way through everyone. And he's just left on Calais. Miles away right now. As he will peek with a deagle. But no Karma is there to be found. Karma, Karma salvaging. The round there, we saw a five versus four in favor of Prophecy, but Kalma Panya there just mows all of those CTs down with the pistols, and that will save Reason's bank as well. Imagine if Karma had gone down as a five versus three, more frags had happened, even though the bomb was down towards uh, B side from Reason, exit frags or kills onto the site could have dented that T economy so heavily, but instead, off of the back of Karma's huge play, he's just going to make it one loss for that T economy. So the money is still afloat, and that's so crucial going into the first bar round. They can't be out of money after the first buy round. It's true indeed. Needs to try to reset themselves. Get their minds back in the game right now. Prophecy obviously going to be struggling to the falling round. Should be essentially a given at this point. Reason. Need to continue this damage that they're starting to bring to the table. Playing with a lot more confidence. Playing how we expect to see them at this point. Mace as well. Needs to get back into that role. That was the issue when yep. we saw him uh, obviously appear last week. Is that online he is going to be that hothead. He's going to run confidence. in, do the damage. Yep. He has the confidence on LAN. The confidence isn't there. It doesn't show up. It looks a little bit better for him now on his T side. Yeah. He said he was scared to die. And he can't be scared to die on land versus Prophecy right now. as the entry fragger for your T side. So far, Mace hasn't really been tested in that role. Coming into the first Byron, we'll see how much of an impact that psychological boost, maybe, from uh, Josh, their interim coach, has brought in. Nevertheless, though, it's going to be round number 18 and the full eco coming out from Prophecy. Obviously, Collar did save the armor and the UMP. But apart from that, it's going to be four sets of pistols on that CT side. For reason, there should be another round with the SMPs where you stack up as much cash as possible and have money leading into the buy rounds. Trendy. Nice early flash there actually coming out as well. That did flash over Karma towards mid. Kept him at bay early. Didn't want to go for the peak because he thought someone was going to go for the early face. Mace is going to try and go for those entry kills on that 10. Will get the opener back on towards Calais. And this is where he needs to come into play massively. They have the stack just outside. Arch has all the information as well. They did go for the play. Him and Craig would need to be vital into the round. Exactly that. Five versus four. They have the MAC-10 as well. The MAC-10 can just find out all the information it needs. You can see it's currently using the charge of opponents. Great. Spot slash Arch. Actually, there's two players following in close suit. They're on the first frag onto Arch and Connor. And the Mace there, the MAC-10. We'll find the frag onto Quick. So five versus one. Mace there finding two frags with the SMG, so that's $1,200 into his bank account. Nice and easy as Cinder finds the last with once again the UMP. Question for me is, do Reason Gaming risk this round and bring the SMGs into the first buy round? If they do, is it really worth the risk? Risk versus reward. Right now it's about rounds. You're 7 to 11 down. Mm -hmm. If you can see this one with the SMGs, probably get to 12. They might have four alive, three alive, have their bank start to build. It's a risk to take, and actually they will just drop over two of the SMGs and keep four AKs, so... It will be a slight risk here, obviously hit them on the SMG. But then again, let's see what style of play they're going to bring. The early face comes out from Kolor, but unfortunately no kills will go his way. Let's get the tag though. Hoodlum knocked down to only 14 HP. That could come back to bite them into the late round, as he's so very low. Not a lot of sustain left. Look at this from Cinder, actually. 
A lot of confidence teeming with it, in fact, as he does try and go for the play towards Jomsak. Flashbang over. It's going to work around it. Peeks in. Does he know the location of Slap? I don't think he does. Quicks as well jumps going towards Be sure trying to see if there's actually more than just one player there. So, one minute. Three really players towards playground and they long for the T side. Reads in gaming, nearly mirroring exactly the default we saw from Prophecy. The problem is right now they have no control of connector. Yes, there's no CTs there, but the T's have no control of it right now, which means if they do try to go for a fake towards A, then they might be surprised that they don't have control of the connector position. Nevertheless, Hoodlum right now 14 HP. He's gonna have to be the player that goes first. You want Hoodlum to die first with the SMG and have someone close behind him to get a trade frag. Best case scenario right now for Reason Gaming is it's a four versus four, Hoodlum dies, Cray gets a reply kill on Mace, sorry, we'll get a reply frag, and it's a four versus four in your advantage. But right now, as it is the five versus five, 35 seconds left on the clock, they might be walking back into the scope of Koloff. This could be very scary, as he has the angle on lockdown. Not a man to be taken lightly as well with the AWP. Very, very dangerous into this round. We'll reposition. Smoke does come over to give them time to pass through. Actually, he gets a lot of information because this, but here comes the true play. Smoke's Molotovs soar through the air as they try and take the fight towards Psycho. was able to reposition efficiently, though. Will strike first, takes down Hoodlum. Karma also falls. Mace eventually steps it up as Mace finds two kills. Oh, but Kolo going huge. He rips his way for everyone. Unfortunately, falls at the wrong timing. Time as well ticking away. They will find that kill on towards Craig. So close to actually killing him after time at that point. They're two seconds left before they were even fully committed to the site. Massive all play there from Call Up to hold off the T push coming in through Toilets and A Long. Gets all the information he needs to us. Spots two players towards Long. Usually, if you're doing a 4 1 style of fakes, you'd have one player towards A Long. He would smoke the bottom of Long, deny all CT vision, and then go back through Toilets and then throw his flashbang, his Molotov, and whatnot. That way, you think there's players Long and there's players Toilets, but actually, there's only one player there, so the fact that he saw two players towards A long meant he knew exactly what the deal was. Once again, trying to go for the mid face, but doesn't see anyone just yet. We saw what happened in the previous round where Reason Gaming waited for the clock to go too far towards the end. Obviously, 30 seconds left, they were forced into the push and forced into the good crossfires that Prophecy had. You had the orb on color towards Truck, you had the M4 as well on to Calais towards, um, well, Bank basically holding the cross towards site, so they had the angles covered for each other. And they walked into the crossfire. Let's see what Cinder can do right now towards B. Can he find an entry and have a one man advantage for a reason finally? Cinder could be the difference maker. The fall on their side into the round if he gets the opening kills at least causes a little bit of a distraction right now. Just sniffing out the site to see where the CTs are situated so he can be a catalyst into the late round right now. This is holding. I'm trying to see if anyone from water. Flash comes in. Fun. Just about. Will the trade come in? No, he gets the flick headshot. Doesn't quite get the third though, but still two frags found. But as I said, that Arch finds two for himself. Yeah, big play from Arch coming out as he will be able to respond instantly. Karma as well does damage taking him down. They only have two men left standing and they're spread thin. They are indeed three versus two right now as the retake comes in. Kit onto Kola with the EWP though. Molotov onto Calais, but no smoke grenade. Ah. Goes out, but he's caught off guard. Position of Crate will come out on top into that round as he takes him down. It's all on Kola, most likely going to just back off. Trying to get those late round exit frags right now. And then fall back, hold on to the orb, don't run the risk of losing it. Exactly that. Collar and I are going to be going for the save. Reason Gaming win round number 20, and it puts them to eight. Can we see the money, please, Sliggy? I actually won't. Just wait a second, because Cray is approaching him. Oh, long, and it will actually spot him out. Orb not save, and actually, will they go for double up setup? No, they're not going to do that. See the Cray on your screens. Mace is behind him as well. Inexperienced. Newton, I guess, filling in the shoes of Thomas. There. As soon as Arch found that two, this 2k here as well towards B, I thought, okay, this could be the end here. But nevertheless, the money for the prophecy side is low. They're going to be going for the eco. And actually, this should be a double eco because look, they've got 1,000 in the bank. After this round, they had their round loss bonus reset, so they can't buy into the next one. And then again, they're going to be on eco. So this could be 9 to 12, and then again, 10 to 12. So we could be seeing Reason Gaming hot on that comeback, hot on the tail on the pursuit towards coming back to 12 12 if they win the next buy round as well. Look at that bike coming out as well. Sending so go for the P90 for the explosion it, towards that B bomb side. Just try and hit him with whatever he's got. Very mobile with a weapon. He's the only uh, player I actually ever see by the P90. Still an arch towards long toilets. Backed up as well by the team. Oh, CZ close proximity. You never want to run that risk because it can be so powerful like that. They get the efficient trade as well as Kolob will strike at the right time. Takes down Hoodlum. Four to three. And they're starting to scavenge weapons. This is not looking good so far for reason. They have to make their play towards that B bomb site now. They do have utility and a free site. Yeah, that's the thing, right? Going for the retake right now, yes, you have a mad advantage, but you have no Kevlar on Slap, no Kevlar, Kevlar on Calais as well. So that retake will be so hard, especially now as they lose a player. 
as it goes into a three versus three. Not a good situation to be in now. Losing the advantage they had, the thing that made the difference into the round. They're trying to try and play together. Utility-wise, only have one flashbang between all three members, and Quick could be walking into a death trap. Actually, pulls a fast one, but Karma is even faster. Takes him down as he responds very efficiently. Another kill going to go his way as well, just roaming around right now, playing with his food before he takes them down. Slap realizes it's not worth the risk. Hold on to the AK. This is a uh, double save, so saving the AK would be vital into the next round. Actually, could get an AWP as well for himself. Karma, surfing a little bit right it's now. It's in the sky, though. This yeah. is going to be an inaccurate shot. Oh. Chops off eventually. And there we go, 9 to 12 would be the scoreline. And Eco coming out from Prophecy finds three kills, but not quite the round. So, Reason Gaming now three behind. Quicks on your screen, the IGL and captain for that Prophecy side. You're looking good so far. Recent form obviously starting to work their way back up. In terms of what we need to see though right now is obviously. Oh, look at Ash. To I told you, yeah, I said it. They had to double eco, which means yeah. this could be where Reason Gamer get to 10 12. And from there, it's all down to the buy round. If they can win the buy round that follows this round here, make it 11 to 12, and then win versus the quasi buy, we could definitely be seeing 12 to 12. I said they had to break the money of Prophecy if they wanted a chance at this one. And so far, so good. They've done it. Prophecy, you've got to favor from their CT half. And it's because of how much more structure they have. But right now, it's not showing up. Mostly because of the money deficit they've had into this eco round as well. They're finding the easy entries. It's so simple. You have the rifle advantage. You can just play together, work as a unit, and find those easy kills. Slap as well in close range. Unfortunately, not even a dink coming out from him. He will fall. They have got control of that B bomb site. Calais, miles out of position. Can't do too much. Probably not even going to find that many exits at this point. Needs to just try and bide his time. Hope for the best. Exactly that. Can't even salvage a gun as well as it is. Five players staying alive for the T side. You can see their money right now. 4,000 on to Cinder, 6,000 on to Karma Pang. So their money is uh, fairly decent. They can buy up for the next two rounds. What are you pointing at that, mate? If he, uh, if he wants to run the risk, he should try, uh, try clear spawn. Because I did think they upgraded one weapon. So. Um, well, even then, it would just be uh, a UMP. Yeah, tough UMP, though, mate. Yeah, it's not yeah really but into the next uh, one, no, they can still buy. No. Oy. So, their money. They've lost two in a row. We, I think I saw someone with $3,000, so they can buy an AWP. And actually, finds one frag, but I don't think he's able to get the AK because Karma Pang is there. What's the shot? Reface with a pistol, and actually has low HP. Whiffs it even more. Able to switch out to the AK before he gets taken down as well. The Molotov will come at bay, but unfortunately, Cinder's in the rear. Locked and loaded. We'll find the headshot. Exactly that. So, big 3k there from Cinder. Puts it to 10 to 12 right now. Look at the pressure onto Archer's face. He knows exactly how close this game is right now. One buy round could separate these two teams. Recent game, they win this round, make it 11 to 12. Force the quasi buy onto the CT side, win versus the pistols and Kevlar. That could be 12 to 12 on the board. Nevertheless, though, it's going to be four AKs in the open to come up hang up versus them on that CT side. Finally, a full strong buy from Prophecy, all onto Collar and four rifles to back him up as well. It's going to be the two man default. Actually, we have Cray there as well, but look where Collar is. Aggressive angle here. This aggression is going to be the key to their success in the round. Collar's able to strike as well. This time, it's not just a tag, it is an opening kill, but there's the response. Mace sprays his way through Arch, retreats as well. Not going to get overconfident and try and bite off more than he can chew. Look at the play from Quicks. This is clever. So much information. That's exactly what's going on. Able to chime in as well. Kohler also takes down Cray. And they've dismantled Reason for this round now. They don't have too much left. Cinder trying to hold it together. Thread the needle back through and at least give them something to play with. But it is not looking good. He needs a second frag here towards Graffiti. Slap there. No utility. So if Cinder gets the sight here, he can't have the counter mollies, the counter flashes he needs to hold off the bomb as well. But as I say that, the bomb going towards connector Karma Pang is slowly going down those steps, those stairs even. We'll be rejoining Cinder. So the question is, three versus two. Do they opt to go towards the A site where there's two players, Quick to low HP and the AWP onto Collar? Or do they fake the smoke towards Heaven, the flashes as well, and then run through connector back towards A? Let's find out. 40 seconds to play with. Invest in all that utility right now as they Molotov over. They're just going to hope for the best. They take the fight in. Cinder will entry out, but unfortunately goes down. Karma can strike back as he trades with the AWP, grabs the bomb, got 30 seconds to play with, and it's a swift rotate. Exactly. There's a Molotov as well. Can money towards lower, but actually, unfortunately for him, the rotations from the CTs, they've grouped together, and now he sees it. He knows they're both towards heaven. Money Ooh, nade. nade. Oh. Oh, doesn't quite connect, though. So we are still into a two versus one. Karma Panga, 14 HP. He's used all the utility he had. He has to find both his frags now, and he expects a player towards heaven. Unfortunately for him, they're rotating him through lower. All on his raw skill right now. We'll find the first kill as he's able to do damage. Left in a one versus one. Karma, it would be huge if he's able to step up. Finds the angle, but couldn't quite pull the trigger in time. Kolo takes him down, grabs the AWP, and will get the defuse as well. Still, 10 to 13 now, as Prophecy slowly clinched that one back from a four versus three. Cinder and Kamapanga nearly bring that one back. Kamapanga, the one versus three, finds the two frags. Gets the bomb down as well. It's going to be good for the reason side money. 
of Prophecy. One player surviving means they've had their round loss money reset. They have no players alive to stabilize their money as well. We're going to see it come in in just a second once we see their cash. Oh, still, they're going to be in about 1,400. Oh, sorry, they won the round with the bar, with the diffuser, 3,500. Should be in their bank. But yeah, look at that. Two UMPs, two and fours, and an orb. And no one on that CT side has money right now. Reason Gaming win this round. They're going to break the bank. A full reset. Not the quasi buy, but a full reset. A harsh reset of that on to that CT economy. This is a massive round right now for Prophecy to win. This could be where Reason get back into it. Confidence is still in their favor as well as they take the fight through, but that's a bad miss from Kohler. If he would have been able to get that trade back, it would have been massive into the round, but it's not quite going down that way. Hoodlum as well takes down Arch. Only three members left on the CT side. Already make that two as Kohler loses his head as Hoodlum will do another huge impact frag. Remaining two players as well have just SMGs. No kit as well. This frag is so crucial towards Connector. And Grey wins the duel. It's going to be a one versus four now. A massive round for Reason to win. They've broken the bank of Prophecy. And as Calais can change it in a one versus four. But the bomb being planted towards B. Yes, no kit. Could try and salvage an M4 here, saving to round number 25. But the harsh reset will come in for Prophecy. Reason Gaming are going to get to 11 to 13. If they win versus the force, what that comes next. And then the eco, we could easily be seeing 13-13. With the momentum we've seen on the T side overpass, this could be a massive win and upset for Reason. There is the AWP drop by Toilets, but he doesn't want to go for it, it seems. He's just going to stick with the AK instead. Full back, not overextended, obviously unaware of which angles are in play by Reason right now. As they can go for the hunt efficiently, they're happy to run the risk into this round. Cray as well, not someone you want to be going up against in this sort of scenario. We'll peek out, but it's not meant to be this time. Gives away his position as well. Has the Kevlar, so aim punch isn't quite enough right now. He comes in, Hoodlum loses the AWP as well. And actually, is he just giving away an orb? No, this was the orb that, uh, that was dropped by Kylo. But still, that means Kylo can retrieve it, though. Unless... No. So he finds the frag onto Cinder. Can he get the orb before the time runs out? Yeah, he can. So, orb salvaged. Can drop that over to Kolo if you want to. But then again, Kelly has the armor. So the question is for Kolo, does he invest Kevlar into this round? But, anyway. It's going to be 11 to 13. Reason Gaming now winning the crucial round that resets all the bank and money that Prophecy previously had. And look at this. The force buy comes out. Their money, their buy, it's all awful. Deagle onto Quicks, no utility. Slap there with a PT-50, double flashbang and smoke. Orb onto, onto Calais. He had the Kevlar, he's kept it. Collar with no Kevlar and the SMG. It's a big round right now for Reason Gaming to win. This could be the draw, the 13-13. And from there, they could be taking this one. So, they're looking good right now as they're some damage into the round. Slow rotate coming over as we can see Calais reposition. Calais actually gets tagged out and they locate him as well. Cinder, they're going to try and go for the frag, but unfortunately Calais bounces into it and takes him down. So, four versus five right now, one man advantage right now for the CT side. Prophecy with one minute 15 left on the clock. Low HP onto Hoodlum as well as he was dinged up by the pistol. So, thanks against the ropes right now for Reason Gaming. What do they decide to do right now? Are they going to continue the stack and they execute towards the B bomb site? And if they do, it'd be the right call. You can see the three-man rotation from B towards A. Prophecy expecting a fake towards B, and actually the execute to come towards the A bomb side. So we're just gonna go down towards short right now. Kept at bay for the meantime as they do have to fall back at the very least. Slap trying to go for the information play. Mace is there ready to try and trade when he can. But it's going to be right now. Smoke dabs of utility as well left. Smoke comes in towards heaven. And now we have it. Five versus four. All down to Arsh now with the Kevlar. Arch on location. Goes for the pre fire. Will peek into it. Actually, does find one shot, but Karma can trade it back fairly swiftly as they now make their play in full commitment towards the bomb site. Hoodlum as well. That kills Vital. Takes down Kolo. Leaves him with just three players up close. Personal slap makes the jump though as he goes over. Bounce through the smoke. They're not sure where he actually is right now as he's up close. Finds the easy kill to P250, leaving them with just two players remaining. Make it one. It's all on Karma once again towards the bomb site. With the AWP. Finds the wall back on towards. Slap needs to reposition, but Quicks was in the rear. Heartbreaking loss there for Reason Gaming. They thought they had it in the bag. They thought they are going to win the force by, win the eco, bring it back to 13-13. Instead, though, Prophecies, force by, or PT-50s and UMPs change that as they make it 14-11 to 11 now. Kamapanga, he knows exactly how important that round was to win. They were so close to breaking the bank and forcing an eco once again. Very close game on our hands. Round number 26 now. It's going to be the SMG on to slap. Three, oh, actually, two M4s and two orbs for the CT side. Are we going to see one orb towards A, one orb towards B? I believe we are. Kolo there has the orb. Going to go towards B short, I imagine. He has a bad spawn towards Monster. This is risky. Kolo 
Ready to try and do some damage. Peek out finds a nice flick on towards Hoodlum. That's a beautiful opener as they continue through, though, fighting through the pain. He misses the second shot. Karma is the explosive entry fragger. He's able to do damage with the rifle, get his way into the site. Cinder as well steps up to the mark. Slap. He's in a good location, but can he actually play his time in right? We'll find the one headshot trying to kill the bomb planter. Mace gets away with it, though, somehow. Was able to just stick to the full commit. Cray, a double kill to close it out at the end. Big round to win as well. Prophecy. So close to match point there. The reason game, the fast push through Monster. They find the well, they lose the first man, but it's a fast trade there towards Monster, towards Pella. But from that, it's going to be 12 to 14. In the preface, I said how crucial it is for their T sides. They go for the 5 AK setup or the 4 AK setup, but their style of play is trades. Similar to like a Virtus Pro, where you have the riflers, you have that close spacing between each player, and each player is in a position where they can trade each other. But right there, the trade game reigns true as it makes it 12 to 14 right now. Reason gaming only the two round deficit and they're versus the full eco prophecy. Back against the ropes now. They are making their play through. These pistols not going to be that efficient right now. Playing it out like a gun round, just these close crossfires. It's going to be where they're at their absolute best. Slap has the flash as well. So if they do get an audio key, a little bit of information that could play into their favor, they can go for the flash peak, which they actually are going to do. This could still work out quite well, but they strike early. The T's are able to get the opening frag. And it's just easy pickings from here on out. They have the range advantage. It should just be a clean sweep. Actually getting tagged down. Two players incredibly low, but Mace will be able to bring it back. You say that. Actually, Slap there finds a nice headshot with the USB onto Mace. Turns into two casualties for that T side, but nevertheless, it's going to be one round now separating these two teams. Uh, drop Getting in closer again. and closer. Let's see what the buy is going to be like for Prophecy. They've ecoed this one. This could be an M4 low utility Kevlar buy. This could be one AWP, three M4s, two UMPs, and it will be. Oh my goodness. Instead of conceding round number 28 with an eco. This could have been 14 to 14, and they would have had a very strong buy into round number 29. They're risking everything here, Jack. Round number 28, two UMPs, two M4s, and an all onto collar. It's looking like the fast execute towards the B side for a reason. Can Arch hold it alone? Arch needs to be such an impactful uh, person into this round. Has to be the difference maker as the push comes through. We'll only get one headshot, though. Slap responds as well as the CTs are defending it very effectively at this point. Only two Ts left. Karma. He's got the AWP. He's been so prolific with the weapon. He will find the frag, but he's not able to get the second kill as well. Quicks reacts too fast, and Hoodlum is left in a one versus three. A massive deficit. He has utility, but he's completely forced out the site. The Molotov keeps him at bay. This is not looking good. Exactly that. One versus three right now. 38 points of health as well for him. Calais, 46 HP for him. Quicks at 75, so three bullets to kill Quicks, two bullets to kill Calais. But then again, he's low HP himself. Very hard round for him to win. Push comes through. Hoodlum is aware of Kolor's position. He's trying to go for these pot shots. It's a battle of who is going to run the risk and overface into this right now as he needs to try and take these one versus ones. This is his only chance into the round. They're not going to be silly about it. They peek together. Kali will take him down. Massive round there. We saw what happened to the money and prophecy. They went for the buy into round number 28. There are two UMPs, two M4s, an AWP, and no kits as well. Imagine if Reason Gaming had found the entrance towards B, and it was a three versus three or four versus four, for example. There was no kits on that CT side, just proving how low that money really was. That could have been the difference maker. Instead, they're round number 29. Reason Gaming have to play for OT as they're forced to use all the money they have in their bank account. And when they're in their inventory will be a Deagle onto Mace, two UMPs and two AKs, but a full buy on that CT side. This should be 16 to 13 here, Jack. Yeah, this could be where they close it out. Definitely looking like it will be the round that ends this first map here over and over past. There's probably they have the defense. They have everything they need to try and pick up this round. What's key as well is this is Reason's pick. They prepared for this one. And so far, not so good. Because they are one round away from losing 16 to 13. The question is, on Mirage, Prophecy have picked that map. What are they going to show? We've already seen some great executes from them towards, oh no, the past, sorry, towards B. What are they going to show us on Mirage? A map that they've picked and they've prepared for this week. Yeah, that's the scary factors, obviously. This is the amount of structure they're bringing to the table here on their away map. So what can they actually do on their own turf right now? Kolor trying to go for the early information. Play will be spoken out. No one is there to greet him, unfortunately. He will not be aware of the location of Cinder. Normally, that annoying lurk towards the bomb site. This time replaced. One is lonesome just by Cray. 
So, 5 versus 5 once again. 40 seconds left on the clock, and the T's don't really have much map control. Look how far pushed the CTs are. This could be bad timing as well, because they get caught with their pants down. Slap trying to react. Cinder actually does take down Kale. It's all on Slap to try and be the nuisance that will keep them at bay. Bias team makes enough time to rotate over. Cray as well, still waiting to try and go for the backstab towards the B bomb site. They've made the call to rotate back over. They've lampooned them. They're taking the fight towards B. Luckily enough, Arch does find the kill and gets the molly down. Crucial molly will prevent the T attack for six more seconds. They try to smoke it out. They do take it down with the smokes. They push their way through. The Deagle comes out towards Mace, trying to do damage. Left himself in a one versus three. It's not going to happen. Quicks finds a headshot. They pick it up and they close that round out. They wanted to go for the fake. Wow. Unfortunately, they were aware of what was going on. Look at the relief there onto Collop. He knows exactly how important this 2 0 is for Prophecy. They're at six points currently. If they win this next map here on Mirage, go to nine points in the league and we secure themselves a spot into the top four and the playoffs. That's the thing, both these teams right now, they needed a 2-0 so crucially as they're not too happy with their standings, they could do better. Exactly. They've been left with horrible results. If they were able to get that 2-0, that would have projected them so far up. I think the reason they're so um, nervous and stressed out over this game is the fact that they don't want fourth. If yeah. you have fourth, you play versus the top seed being Invis Academy. And what happened last week, a 16-0 and a 16-10. So very one-sided affair versus Envious Academy. If they come third or second, they will not be playing them straight away in the playoffs. So. Crucial win here. Can they make it nine points themselves? But for Reason Gaming, the best they can do now is a draw. So the maximum points they can have after the, this week, week four, will be two points. Yeah, not a great result for them. Obviously, want to try and work their way back through. There still is one more map to come. Why don't we head over to Tom and see what went on there? Thank you very much, uh, Jackie. Thank you very much, Snods. What we're going to do right now is we'll have a little break. And when we come back, we'll have all the analysis on map one, which was overpass. <laughs>
So here we have it, week four of the Elite Series. Prophecy were setting out to avenge those demons from last week and they managed to do so with a 16-13 victory over Reason Gaming on the map, which was map one, which was Overpass. Some risky buys that paid off for them and some great shots as you can see there and a few energy drinks to help Reason along the way. 10-0 uh, up they were at one point, Prophecy, and they managed uh, to let that lead slip but held out in the end. So I'm um, joining me, SEO and James. Um, how did how did you find that map? Uh, a very entertaining bit of Counter-Strike. Well, it felt like a bit of the Elite series as a whole so far. It's yeah. been weak CT sides. We saw that from Reason, obviously 10-0 down. And then Prophecy doing similar thing on the Earth, like second half. It felt like a repeat of what I've been kind of moaning about the past few weeks. Why is your message not getting through to the message? <laughs> you keep seeing CT side, CT side. But 10 nothing lead at one point for Prophecy. What happened there? Because there was moments where, did, did they not uh, change their tactics quick enough? Was that in-game communications which you'd spoke about before? Um, well, I, I stayed on the desk uh, for the entire match and they're sitting behind us. So there, there was a lot of talking going on. So, you know, we saw good signs. Didn't hear much from the other team until they started winning some rounds late on. But I think credit to uh, Prophecy, they, they had some good strategy on the T side to break the initial buys of the CT side. And when you, when you win the pistol as well, then you can really start to run away with the, the first half of the first half, mm. if that makes any sense. So, uh, for example, um, Karma had an AWP set up with support from a rifler near Connector, but they threw flashes over the wall, the T side, and uh, it was the rifler who was engaging first because the, the AWPA was blind. And then when he came in to repick, that's a really horrible angle. And when if you're scoped in, for example, you move slow. So it's, so it's awkward with the AWP. And that, that gets disintegrated. The rest of the round falls apart. Um, so once you've had your first two buy rounds broken, then you're going to be at a 5-0, five, 6-0, five, 7 zero deficit. So, I mean, they had strong tactics, Prophecy, uh, for, for when they were having T side. Uh, but then, I mean, what went wrong then? Because then all of a sudden, they began to lose it a little bit and then did, did they did they alter their tactics too slowly because once they began to get more aggressive they began to win back those rounds again yeah i think it was the case like reason they started realizing we need map control and i think it was like round 12 or 11 that they pushed out like, towards mid took control like beyond the toilets part of the map they just took control and it was like the first time they'd done it and prophecy kind of got caught out by it and it just changed everything because prophecy like oh we can't keep doing what we've just been doing they've started taking map control over here what can we actually do? And obviously, it did help Reason a lot getting those four CT rounds. Yeah, round, round 11, um, they had that aggressive play, the CT side. But it was interesting because they had smokes out and um, they were there for quite a while and there wasn't a lot happening. But then somebody um, was near the fountain area and managed to get a 2K where one person was towards the stairs, one person was the other side of the playground, which which is a, a big second frag in that situation. I don't think he's expected to get two kills at that point. And when those smokes disappear, they're very exposed as well. So that definitely helps. If he doesn't get that second kill, then maybe they end up losing the round there. So that was a, a huge turning point for them. Mm. Definitely. I mean, we're seeing that, that I mean, obviously 10 nothing up and then uh, really Reason came back into it and obviously forced in Prophecy to, to take the eco rounds. and. They began to prosper. I was, I was sat in the audience with some of the, the spectators and they were saying, oh no, reason they're going to get this, they're going to come back into it. They were talking about OT, a uh, bit of uh, overtime. Um, but, um, but obviously, there was one point, I think maybe towards the penultimate rounds, where there was a risky buy from Prophecy, uh, which paid off, which in CSGO is risk and reward. But uh, to talk, talk us maybe through that, well, what happened with Prophecy. They, they went big and it paid off. Yeah, I think that was the 25th round. They just lost after getting, uh, getting around. Normally you get reset and you kind of have to risk, do we force into this or do we eco one more round and get a better buyout? They risked it and obviously it paid off because they did end up winning the game from that really. If they lost that, it probably would have meant they'd go like maybe 13 or 14, 13 to reason or something. So very bold to do it obviously and technically the correct thing to do in my mind because pistols and SMGs are really overpowered at the moment in this game. So uh, we go on to map two. Um, exciting stuff. Uh, Mirage, how are you going to see this one? Well, I know that Reason have played Mirage quite a bit, but Prophecy, obviously, they picked it. It's their pick. They picked that over Cobble, for example. I think Reason might have been trying to trick them into possibly taking it themselves, but I still don't see Reason taking it, honestly. <laughs> really? I think Overpass is a good warm-up for both teams going into Mirage because we saw, we saw the Orpers, we saw Kolo and Karma, a close range and medium range, having really nice shots, really great snaps, and being really fast as well. So now we're going to go into the longer ranges of Mirage, but both Orpers are definitely warmed up, so that's going to be uh, 
good going into their second match. I'm um, sort of smiling, Jason, because I can hear some <laughs> cheering and some singing going on. I believe for reason side, they're trying to pep themselves up. Can you see them winning this map too, Mirage? I'm going to get your prediction. On well, along, along with the Orpers as well, I think there was a standout um, in that match who was, who was Calais on the T side. You know, they did a fake towards the B-bomb site. He got a 2K on his own. Um, so he's going to be a big problem for reason to deal with. Um, so from what I've seen so far, I would go with Prophecy as, uh, again. Prophecy again, yeah. just going to be too strong. To I, I think I think they're, they're more prepared in terms of strategy. Mm. Um, but I did want to point out there was a, Karma had a really nice hold with the AK towards Long because Prophecy. If, I don't know if you noticed, but they were prepared on their eco round. They expected like Long is one of the. Uh, best plays on an anti-eco for a team on overpass, right? Uh, so, so Prophecy put the numbers there and Karm was able to clean them up very well. But if, if he's unable to do that, if they're as prepared on Mirage as well, they're going to have a lot of problems for Reason. So it's those tactics are going to really pay off for Prophecy. They look very strong. They let it slip a little bit and Reason came back into it. Can you see SEO Reason taking this map? No. <laughs> okay, there you go. No. <laughs> they have Karma playing really well, Kray was playing really well, and they still didn't get it. Yeah. So they would need a third person to step, like, step up, possibly Cinder maybe. In the past it was Thomas. I just don't see it happening. Just proving once again in this uh, Elite Series and in many CSGO games, it's about it's not a death match, it's not a puggy situation, you've got to have those tactics. Um, I'm going to throw over to the two gentlemen uh, to my right. Uh, there they are, uh, Snods, Jackie. Uh, you feeling pumped after a little mini break? Ready for yeah. round two of this? Yeah, pretty good. Feeling pretty good. Great Counter-Strike so far, close games as well, 16 to 13. Predictions for me, I think, yeah, this should be a Prophecy 2-0. Yeah, I think we're looking at the uh, the all-way prophecy right now. It's just going to be steamrolling through, I imagine, at this point. I believe we... Uh, oh, no, it's going to be the map coming through. So this is Mirage, obviously. Right now, you're having two similar-style pug sort of teams right now. It's all down to the middle portion of the map. Can you take control of mid? Where are your aim? Your individually skilled player is going to find entries. Are they going to be pushing through connector trying to find frags on towards A? Are they going up short trying to find the frag onto the player apps? or bench or towards that B-side default, where is the action going to take place? That's the thing. James hit the nail on the head as well, obviously. We're going to see a lot of AWP combat going into this yep. one. Mid control is going to be so vital. Karma as well right now needs to fill in for Thomas. And Thomas, your very aggressive roaming AWPer. We're going to see him taking early peeks towards window, swift peaks towards there is connector. No Thomas. That's what I mean. Karma oh, right, needs yeah. to try and adapt to that sort of play style. More so for Karma as well. He's more of your laid-back hopper. Yep. So this is going to be the true test for him as he has to adapt quite heavily. More of this sort of hectic aggression we saw over and over pass. When we casted um, Reason versus Method a few weeks ago, it yep. was all about the CT sides, actually. T sides were weak on both sides. So that could play into the favor of Reason. Obviously, not having your entry frag on that T side is far more impactful than on the CT side. That could be a silver lining for Reason going into Mirage. Question for me is how many rounds can they get on that CT side? That CT pistol is going to be so crucial. And if they win it, can they get to 9-6? If they can, then maybe there's a chance for the draw. Nevertheless, it should be a 2-0. Yeah, always scary as well, because obviously with reason right now, the game they had against Method, even though at the time Method, we're looking at them as being the best UK team by a mile. Yep. All UK teams have that internal struggle on their CT half. They can never really excel to the best of their ability for some reason. It doesn't quite work out. We're talking post plants. We're talking teamwork in those sort of situations. Whereas a team like Prophecy, even though there are communication issues inside of that lineup, and you see it because they're still newly formed, they're still trying to get things ironed out. It's the kinks there, yep. it's still better. We see a lot more communication, smart teamwork. We're seeing constant flashes for each other, smart play as a unit, and that's where they have that advantage on that CT half. Talking about communication as well, you have uh, Arch flying in from Ukraine every, every single week. Yeah, yeah so. Jet lag, maybe, or how will that impact, uh, impact the comms? Sorry, but anyway, enough of that. As we are going live into the pistol round of Mirage, map number two of game number one. Let's see, it's going to be the smoke diffuse kit this time from Hoodlum, not the full utility. And it's going to be Forces of Kevlar on that T side. Calais once again buying utility for the terrorist side. Flashbang and smoke grenade and the PT 50 for him. Utility to play over is going to be important. Look at Arch as well here. Early on, going for that contact play towards the B bomb site. So. It's going to be two players pushing off ramp right now, trying to see if they can find an entry and cause a stir, cause a fake towards the A side. Force the rotation. Here we go as they will push their way in. The massive late round play towards the B bomb side, but it's not working out in the favor they wanted it to. They need to do damage here, force the rotate over, make some noise, but right now it's sort of simmered out fairly quickly. The player's gone down towards B as well. Luckily enough, Arch flexes his acrobatic skill snods as he glides through the air, takes down Slinder. Karma's forced to reposition, but it's short lived, gets taken down. Mace arrives on the scene though. This is very hectic. The CTs are just running in one by one. Exactly that three versus two right now. Kit onto Hoodland though. 
Nevertheless, it'll be a two versus two now. Man of the hour. The South African finds a nice staple frag there onto Arch. Two versus two. They have the kin smoke. Yeah, the bomb's down as well, actually, towards L block. It's not in a great position. Kale, if you would have found that frag with the P250, could have been critical. Definitely would have been a game changer. Quicks has to try it and push in as well. Kale does take down Cray. They leave it all in the hands of Hoodlum. He will find one frag, but they trade efficiently. Quicks takes him down. So close there on the opening pistol. Exactly that. Once again, it's going to be the T-Pistol one for both. Well, yeah. last map, it was both sides winning the T-Pistol. And now, respectively, it's going to be Prophecy taking the Terrorist Pistol on Mirage. Let's see what the force is going to be like for reason. Are they going to go five players buying Kevlar? Are we going to see a scout in play? Hoodlums, he's thinking about it. Instead, though, he's actually going to go for the full eco. So it's only going to be Armour to Cinder. Reason game, and they learned from the previous game where they went for the force buy in round number two. They were broke in round number three, and once again had no money apart from an M4 and Kevlar in the back. Oh, Craig gets the opening Deagle shot, though. Look at the confidence on display. Pushes his way up mid, takes down Slap. That's going to be such a nuisance into the following rounds as well, because they're going to be scared that he will use that against them again. Exactly that. Five versus four right now in favor of Reason Gaming. Cinder finds another frag from Seth as well towards Biaps as he pushes it. UMP in his hands. So far, it's going to be Collar right now trying to equalize the numbers towards Connector. Needs to do something as well, Snods. They've got five members still alive on the Reason side. They're scavenging weapons left, right, and center. They're starting to look like they have actually been able to pull a fast one over Prophecy into this round. Collar gives the game away a little bit. The flashbang comes over, allowing him to strike. He just damages what takes down Karma. This is when they regain control of the situation swiftly. Everyone will fall. It's just Kray in the left. Kray. Pretty annoying though, Deagle in hand, they're not even going to give him a chance. Stub him out straight away, and Cinder is just trapped here. Basically just playing for exits at this point. From a 5 versus 3, Prophecy bring it back right now to the 3 versus 1. Cinder once again found himself in a favorite position. Could have been potential, he actually did bypass them. They weren't aware of his location. If the luck would have been in his favor, could have been important into the round, but just get stubbed away. Yeah, exactly that. Only two players as well being dispatched from the T-star, which means the money will be begin to build and swell as they go into round number three. This is going to be another eco here, potentially, from Reason Gaming. So, CZ flashbang bought up by Mace here is $3,000, so does Hoodlum. So they can, if they wanted to, go for the double offset sort of into the first buy round number four. Back 10 onto Quicks. This should be a money round. Have four, have five, stay alive on your T-side. Build up as much cash as you can once the buy rounds do begin. Smokes are going to come out early towards that mid control. Want to just try and keep Cray at bay. Obviously, that Deagle has been annoying already. They don't want to run the risk of seeing what he can pull out of his sleeve into this round. So, Caleb, see if there's any aggression towards Round 4 Palace. He's going to pull back towards the rest of his team. The rest of the team are going up Arch. Sorry, through short right now towards the B site. So, we're down to Cinder. Cinder here. Not going to be that effective. That USP could have found that one frag. If he'd have taken down Arch, it at least gave them something to work with. But look at the confidence. They know they can just go for these aggressive plays and get away with it 99% of the time. They just take the fight through Kolor as well. Switch out to the side on takes down Mace. Cray will fall, and that is the easy ones out of the way. Clean sweep. Exactly that. Five players staying alive for the T side. We have a Mac 10 in play, but he still has Kevlar, so it's not the full rebuy from him. So, do they keep the Mac 10 and the UMP? Do they try and get a bit audacious and get aggressive? Show their hands, show their confidence. Because if you win that round, bringing forward the SMGs, your money is in such a stable position for the rest of the half. So, Mac 10 dropped away. He's going to be given the SMG. Three AKs on the T side with the Orb onto Collar once again. Gray now playing the middle position. It's no longer Karma Panger. Instead, Karma towards B Apartments. Smoke towards top mid. What's that smoke for? Is that for CT from middle? It's very well could be. They're going to go for the late round A take. The smokes do go over. This could definitely throw a spanner into the works. It allows them for that quick take towards Connector as well. So right now they're going to be playing retake. Actually, as I say, that Hoodlum pushes through the CT smoke, trying to get aggressive here towards the side. Try and find a one-man advantage for his team as he execute reigns in. This is looking very smart as they completely draw a line across the site. Slap as well will fire down, takes the head off of Hoodlum, but Mace can retaliate as they're left in a four versus four. But the site has been completely blocked off. They've got absolute control. It's awkward for anyone to peek right now. The CT's forced to bend, but they're breaking. Karmo, though, he wants to bounce back. We'll be able to take down Kali as he leaves them out with the advantage. Three versus four, they have a kit as well onto Mace. They have the Molotov towards Firebox as well. Arch towards Tetris. What can he really do? Good crossfire here from Mace. Beautiful crossfire, exactly that. But it's not working out in the favor they need it to. Cinder and Mace does damage. Cray as well will take down Kolor, and they get the round. Massive round there for reason to win. The first buy round is one for that CT side. If they'd lost that, 3-0 was already the scoreline for Prophecy. That could have been a 4-0, 5-0. Could, we could have been seeing a repeat from the previous T side that Prophecy did to Reason. This is the thing as well, Reason looked a little bit confused about the smoke take that went on there. I think that's one of the old, it's weird, that's the right? old Cloud9 smoke take, where it, instead of blocking out all the angles, it divides a line across the site in a straight line. It was line. the uh, luminosity one that went, it goes center of site, chipper boxes, yeah. under bulk, and jungle, and it's like a line. It allows yeah. you to plant and get control of jungle. That's, those smokes were different because it actually, 
That's not good. The angle is actually covered as well. Alch was scoped in, ready to find that frag. Misses at the wrong timing, and everything started to go downhill off the back of this Cray as well. He gets away with two free frags into the round. It's all go at this point, Snods. Everyone's charging in. Arch actually starts doing damage, though. Finds the double kill that he needs to get. Kola as well chimes in. It's all left on Karma here in a one versus one. Just a few seconds into the round. Arch is low HP as well. 35 points of health is all he has in this one versus one versus Karma Panga. So, bomb towards mid. He can retrieve this, but we're one minute 15 left on the clock. Come up, hang it. If he peeks towards mid now, wide swings from short. This could be the second round one for Reason Gaming. Oh, the timing here is going to be so important as he makes his way off. He has luckily got out of the line of sight. Upgrades to the orb. Actually going to face back in, though, and he's got his knife out. Swarm now, Karma! Unaware, doesn't clear towards top mid. And loses his head. Oh, not happy with that one, is he? Anticipated the play to go through connector. Mm. Or towards underpass. Instead, though, he goes back towards top mid, catches Kamapanga off guard and finds round number four, and that could be the reset in terms of money as well. We had three players stay alive in the previous round for a reason, though. But no, look at this. 2,000 across the board in their bank accounts means they will be conceding this round. The Ica coming out from Easy Gaming. Once again, Arch trying to go for the mid. He misses two Ooh. easy shots there. And now let's see what Craig can do if he's pushing up mid. Catch him off guard, maybe. They were unaware as well. Didn't realize Craig actually dropped out a window. That's a nice opener. He takes the head clean off him with his deagle skills. Four versus four now. Smoking towards one. Towards the apartments. He did a slap as well from underpass. So this could just be a nice slow round here from the T side. Try and see if they can find themselves another frag on 22 USPs. If they do, make it four versus three. And then group up together and just head towards one of the sites and play the trade game. That's the thing right now, especially with the pistols on that CT side. They just need to hold those crossfires, play close angles, try and trade efficiently. Cinder actually does get a bit of confidence behind, takes down Quicks, has grabbed himself the AK as well, and got away scot free snods. This could be quite important into the round. One man advantage now for Reason Gaming. One minute left on the clock. I don't think that Cinder saw the bomb though towards apartments, so we won't be seeing a full rotation from that CT side. And that might actually be lucky for Reason Gaming. Blessing in disguise, because if they'd fully rotated towards B, they'd be going towards the wrong site. Slap now. Trying to infiltrate that CT defense, but Cinder might be able to catch him off guard. It's true, Slap has the round in his hand, and he gets into the bat line, actually does find the head of Mace. This is really going to throw us banner into the work. Cinder, it is all on the correct timing here. Playing out for audios, uh, the audio cues even, trying to listen out for this one. But look at this in the bat line as well. Slap is able to walk straight up behind Karma. He wasn't aware that somehow he could get on towards the B-bomb site. Whoops, up behind Forrest. Finds the kill. Cinder does trade back, though. Headshot comes out as well. Hoodlum strikes Hoodlum! Somehow, pulls it out of the bag with a USP. It looked like everything was gone, but Hudlin was lying in wait and strikes at the exact moment he needs to. Eco round one there for Reason Gaming, making it two to four and resetting the round loss bonus now for Prophecy. It's going to be two to four as we go into round number seven. Let's see what the buyers like for that T side. They're going to be investing into this one fully. Slap there, 1,200. He has enough money for the orb into round number nine if it comes to there. But it all comes down to whether or not Reason Gaming can find the next two rounds and make it four to four. It's going to be the Tech Nine on two players, Deagle onto Calais, and two AKs to fill out the rest of the buy. No presence towards mid at all early here as well, so Craig's going to be aware of that. He's allowed to rotate over, drops down, finds the kill and underpass on towards Quicks. That's a nice opener. Once again, the one-man advantage for Reason Gaming. Slap not happy with that one. He knows exactly how important this force buy is for the rest of the half. This is where those early impact frags of the orb coming in so key as well. It allows them to completely dismantle what Prophecy want to do in the late round. Nice use of smokes as well and an easy frag from Karma. Finds a headshot back on towards Arch. They've burnt so much time. That smoke's still going to be there for a couple more seconds. Prophecy, they look in dismay at this point. So, Deagle on to Khaled towards default. Hoodlum will easily take him down. Slap now the AK. Bomb has not been planted, which means if he saves us, he will get no round loss bonus. So the question is, does he save or does he try to go for a few frags here and try and dent that T C T economy as much as possible? Let's see how it will actually go. Slap makes a slow approach through. The angles are covered. They have an easy setup here as well to trade straight away if something goes wrong. But they're not even going to need that. Mace will take him down, move swiftly, and we'll find the headshot. So, another round there, one for Reason. You can see Slap there, furious at the, at the fact that they lost versus the Eco. They lose the force by, and now they're going to have to concede this round and potentially see a 4-4 four four score on right now. You can see Hoodlum chuckling away, loving the fact that he ha he found those remaining two frags as well with the USP. But this is the Eco now coming up for Prophecy. Ooh, so Slap had enough money for the AWP into round number 9 and actually invested fully into the last round buying utility, which means we're going to be seeing no AWP onto Color. A man that is so prolific with the AWP on a Mirage. Every single time we've seen Prophecy play Mirage, he's so impactful. You know, it's going to be great. 
Okay, I'm just going to go for the flash peek out, charge their way through Palace. They actually do get the opening kill. This is looking a lot harder than it needs to be. Prophecy get away with one plant as well. Exactly what they wanted out of the round. It's going all of their way right now. You've got the two CTs left. Make that one. The slap gives himself an awe and just works his way through. Massive round there for Prophecy to win as they make it five to three. You can hear them screaming as well behind me. Eco rounds one for both sides now. Only nine rounds in. That's the thing, the entire point of that round, purely to get the bomb down at that point. Overwhelm the opposition, one flashbang out from ramp, everyone bursts out of Palace, get the bomb down, that's how it's supposed to go. But they're just completely overwhelmed reason there. We're not ready for well, that. What's meant is the fact that the CT setup on the A site was good as well. Yeah. Mace towards stairs. You had your remaining player as well. I believe it was Hoodlum towards um, Tikipu. So they had the right setup. But the fact that Mace was blind, couldn't find the frag to the exit Palace, allowed them to swarm the site and swarm the CT defense from Reason Gaming. Kolor back on the AWP here, as he does take that mid-control, but no one's there to greet him. Exactly that. Surprising as well, considering that they do have a two up set up on that CT side right now. Cinder boosted towards Del Pan. Or Peek spots our Kolor, and now Kolor is trapped. Oh, stuck in position right now. He has been able to get away scot free as well, so could have been worse than it has actually gone down. Hoodlum will fall at this point as Kali gets the opening frag in towards around, and one of those AWPs is now situated towards mid, but is it going to be impactful will be the question. Exactly that smoke. Anticipating from window now. Cray had bad timing. Already we see Arch towards connector. And a player below him quicks. Oh no, Slap actually comes behind. And now it's going to be the two man advantage. But as I say, that Mace, Mace finds a frag with the fans. Dismantling a lot of structure that Reason had into this round as well it makes it so hard. Mace aware of so many angles that he could be getting pushed from at this point. The seeds are down in his mind. He's going to have to rotate over constantly clearing these angles. What's crucial as well is the fact that Calais is low HP and the bomb is on the AWPer as well. So they need to swap the bomb back to Calais and try and get that bomb onto the site. Kolo wants to have impact from Palace, and already the first frag is found. Kamapanga makes it into a three versus two. Quicks ah. as well does fall from Maze. Three versus one now. Peeking together dry, even though they have that utility right there. They peek out of Palace. They do lose the first man. The second man's also going to go down towards Maze, as you said. All on Kolo. He has the AWP to play with. One Hei Chi on the bomb. He's got 20 seconds here on the timing. There's so many angles he has to clear. Cinder towards short as well. He is inside CPR right now, which means Kolo can plant for mid. And no opposition in his way just yet. It's going to be a one. He needs the first frag and he finds it with the flick. Oh, beautiful headshot comes out as he takes down Karma, but he still needs to do so much more as he will peek in. Mace is there. He has the Bama, just needs to peek and pre-fire, which he will do. Upgrades the AWP as well. That's a huge 4K coming out from Mace and Thorell. Finally starting to come into his own. Exactly that. Round's going back and forth now as we see round number 10. Four to five now. Look at that. He gets the bomb down. It's not the end of the world for him, but it's going to be another force by coming out from Prophecy. We saw what happened on the last, the last force by. Poor plays coming out from the side. They're the Tech Nines, the UMPs, the AKs, but it wasn't enough to conjure up a round. Question is, do they go for the eco or do they force back into this one? Arch buys the AK. UMP bought by Quicks. Orb onto Collar as well. So once again, going to be forcing into round number ten. They have two UMPs, two AKs, and the Orb onto the Orb. Well, the AWP star. Of Kolov on that CT side with the Mag 7 for Kamapanga. Orb onto Kray. This time a single Orb setup. Let's see if that will be the difference maker for Prophecy. You're going to be going for the strategy once again with the line of smokes from the setup they are working into here. They've already shown their hand with the split throughout the site smokes. Let's see if they're going to do more of the default smokes towards jungle, CT, and stairs. The smokes do rain in right now. Going to block off those lines of sight. Once again, it is the plastic take as they actually do force them back. Cray gets the opener on towards Slap here though. That's the court knock there for mid. That's their lurk being shaken down instantly. This could for us banner into the works. Flash comes in towards CT. Hoodlum is blind. Tries to fall away and actually does somehow. Oh, they're able to get away. Arch as well. Gets the spray down. Rips his way through from the AK-47. And that's huge as well. They have the after plant position towards CT. The bomb is planted for them and now in the four versus three they have the man advantage and the after plant positions. Reason. They were just trying to play for the retake, but they're losing the numbers as they just let themselves use every advantage they had in the round. Right now, the decision has been made as well to back off. They don't want to run the risk. Craig actually does find one frag back on Ward's quick, so at least they can exit safely, Snods. But they let that round slip away. Exactly that. Two players towards CT. The bomb is planted for them. They have kits, but the problem is they have no Molotov. They have no Molotovs to flush out the two players. They can't smoke off ramp, smoke off Palace, Molotov firebox, Molly behind triple. They have to peek each angle individually. Will cut their losses and just save and concede round number 10. And it's going to make it 6 to 4 now. So, into this round, what is Reason going to bring us? The fact that the rounds have gone back and forth will be so detrimental for that CT economy. Will they have enough to buy up into this one? They saved three guns, an AWP and two rifles, I believe. I believe. Well, can they drop? I'm not quite too sure. Anyway, we are seeing Reason Gaming on your screen right now. Looking fairly chirpy. They did lose a round there, but nevertheless, the game is not over just yet. It's going to be the buy coming out. 
two M4s orb onto Cray and hoodle him there with the SMG. Prophecy once again on the 4 AK and single orb setup. Seems like uh, Reason Gaming prefer 5 AKs on their T side and Prophecy like to go for the one up onto Collar. Seeing how incredible he's been playing so far, you wouldn't doubt them for it. Definitely not. This is the thing though, he's not actually going to be using that aggression into this round. Just hold him back, playing unless Cray is going to get his confidence back in his favor, try and go for the early mid information play. The true play will be going down towards that site with a bomb. B side has been overwhelmed. They haven't actually able to sneak through. You can oh see Cinder goodness. unaware of what's going on. The complete rotate comes out. They work all the way over through Shaw. Back towards A, but look at the push from Hoodlum. Dismantles the entire round. He's got the bomb. Everything they've done that was executed flawlessly has been thrown out the window now. Three versus three, though. Luckily for Prophecy, they have one minute left on the clock to salvage the bomb. Hoodlum run out being pincered in from T-Spawn and Ramp. Chucks out the molly, but he has to lead towards T-Spawn with misses the flick as well. Yeah, needs one of these kills right now to at least give him a fighting chance in the round. And he's missing these shots, Snogs. This is not how it needs to go. And he will fall down. This is very awkward as there's just two players left. But they're coming in with a backstab once again. Cinder strikes, finds two frags. Critical play into the round. That's the difference maker. Arch now in the one versus two. Has 35 seconds left. He has time to retrieve the bomb and run it back towards the A side. Instead, he's going to take his chances with Cinder towards B. And Cinder, he thinks that Arch will go back towards A instead, though. A good play here from Arch. He anticipates the play from Sin to go back towards mid, towards the A site. And now in the 1 versus 2, he has control of B. Does he expect himself to be greeted by such an open and free site? I believe he does. Going to be planting for short as well. If he can get towards short, find the frag onto Cinder towards Connector. Turn this into a 1 versus 1 versus the Orbital Cray. There's a chance, but right now the CTs have two kits and just a flashbang. That one flashbang is going to be so important into the round as well. Just play together. 3 2 1 beak off the, flack of the, off the back of the flash and just try and work your way in. You can see Arch going to extend way too far out. The bomb is planted for him. He just needs to try and create these one versus ones into this. No utility to try and aid him as well. It is all off the back of the audio queue and trying to go for the frag at the right time. Cinder needs to trade for him and Cinder will find the kill. Takes down Arch. Defuse comes out. Close for Prophecy there. They played such an intricate round as well. So much strategy brought to the table. All off the back of just Hoodlum being able to walk into T-Spawn, finds the bomb, put such a massive spanner into the works, completely dismantled everything they had set up, and it all fell down from that. Great play from Hoodlum as well. As soon as the execution is called towards B, he pushes towards A and yep. T-Spawn. He gets all the information he needs. We saw what happened when Mace was on uh, the B side of Overpass. Whenever an execution came in towards A, he wouldn't push. He would stay close towards Monster. He wouldn't peek anything, and that's the difference between these two players, experience. Hoodlum knows exactly, what's to, he knows exactly what's to do in the scenario when the execution towards, comes towards B. Anyway, though, it's going to be five to six right now. Reason Gaming in a one round deficit. The Corsi by coming in for Prophecy as they have Kevlar, flashbangs onto two players, the MAC-10 onto Arch, and then the pistols to fill out the rest of the buy. Can they really get any entries towards the A side? Oh, look at this, completely forced every rotate off of mid. They have no information, Snods. They've left mid completely open. Quits is able to get into the back line, finds a headshot on towards Cray. It was so vital that they stuck around, especially Mace needed to be there at that time. It's not working out. They're just getting overrun. Cinder now towards CT, finds one frag. Well for himself, goes for the spread, but just about whiffs it. Karma playing another one versus three. Karma have to go huge. He's had some good rounds, but still too much of a tall order for that man. Will fall. This is the thing. They have the double players set up. We had Cray and Mace. Yep. Window and playing from close connector. Both watching towards top mid. Cray calls it clear at that point. They rotate over because of the smokes. Mace instantly rotates off, expecting that full take towards A. It's weird we saw the rotation from the B short player through Kitchen. Yeah. Because if he rotates in through B short instead, he gets all the information he needs. He's going to hear those T players jumping into window as well. But that's the thing. As soon as you get close short, you hear all of their footsteps. Yeah. And exactly. can react off the back of that. It's very, very odd. So, poor rotation there. From, I believe it was Cinder, but nevertheless, it's going to be five to seven right now. Prophecy with the two round advantage. We go into round number 13. Five AKs for them. Well, I say AKs, but I actually call it as an M4. Five rifles then. Let's see what this M4 will do. Olaf, perched up in a high angle, will be able to rattle down a couple of bullets. Finds one kill back on towards Mace. And he gets the information that Hoodlum is there as well. Knows he was close by. They do take this fight with a split push towards the A bomb site. Actually, the CTs find a couple of frags, though. They're able to dent the T power right now as they are finding these openers. Kalik will respond, though, with that rifle. But Cray finds the headshot, leaving them with a deficit. They only have two Ts left into the round. It looked good for them, but it started to slip away very swiftly. Slap falls as well. It's all left on Kali now in one versus one. Cinder sees that in hand. He can be such a nuisance with this weapon, but they're aware of his location. Yep, Kali knows exactly where he is. Goes to the base. Oh my god, he gets the fadeaway headshot! Cinder pulls it out of nothing. Shh. This is the thing. We know he's good with a CZ. Somehow, though, he gets that shot. If that was me, I'd be screaming, cheering. Look at him. Dead face on him. 
He's keeping calm because one of the mistakes you can make in that scenario is you get too hyped up, suddenly you're shaking, your heart rate's racing, and you play worse for the rest of the map. He's staying composed, he's staying calm, and that means he should deliver throughout the rest of this last game. Oh, Kolor, every time Again. he's taken this mid towards, uh, this orb towards mid, he cannot find those entries. Kray has been able to just take him down every round consistently. Doesn't matter though. It's going to be a four versus four as the refrag comes in onto Kray. Six to seven is the scoreline right now. Prophecy one round away from winning the half. Can they make it nine to six? The question is, can Mace hold connect? Yeah, he needs to lock down the choke point this time around. It's been such a massive leak in the previous rounds. He needs to sort it out right now. He does indeed. Four versus three right now. One minute 15 on the clock. Bomb towards B short as well. We have Slap with the AWP towards Delpan. But no one's going to peek in his way just yet. Cinder here towards Window. Peeking up trying to see if anyone will face towards CP. He hears the jumps, he hears the steps. He knows exactly what's going on, but Kale expects it. It's going to be the frag found. Three versus three now. One minute left on the clock. And I believe Cinder spotted the bomb as well. So it's all down to the next frag. Can they get the kill? They entry towards A and they've done it. It's going to be the remaining two CT players towards B. One towards Kitchen, one towards default site on B. No one to hold the A site. This should be a nice and easy round now, as long as Prophecy get the good after plant positions. Yeah. They've got the rotate cut off as well. They just need to hold their angles, essentially, at this point. Karma's forced to go the entire way around from short. Gives the game away as well. Fires up a pop shot. And they're aware of his location now. They just need to try and go soon if they want to attempt to go for this. They do not have a kit to play with. Karma, luckily, will scavenge one now. Limited utility. Exactly Only that. two flashbangs. The Kamale out. Firebox, default or triple. They have no smoke for the bomb, no smoke ah. for ramp or palace. So it's going to be an easy frag. Found with the op by slap. And turns into a one versus three hoodlum now. Doesn't really count his chances. Going to be saving this one potentially. Picks up the AWP, cuts his losses. And in the one versus three, he will be saving, allowing Prophecy to get to eight rounds after winning the pistol. And now that means Prophecy, regardless of how the last round goes, they'll be winning the half. Yeah, looking good so far. This is the thing, though. Such a back and forth game. In terms of how these rounds have shaped up, we're looking at one win, instant reset, four reset. Four spies, yeah. yeah. Battle of the four spies, really, is how I describe this one. What's crucial as well to point out is the fact that when we casted... Uh, well, well, when we've ever casted Reason Gaming on Mirage, their CT side is strong and their T side is weak. Right now, on their CT side, all they can conjure up is six rounds. Is it enough going into the second half? I said in the preface before this game that I think they should be at nine to six if they want a chance of taking this one. And already, they can't even make that. The best case scenario for them is if they win this force by and make it seven to eight. Nevertheless, their prophecy winning the half. And call up. is he going to peek again towards Krazorp? Hoodlum has actually donned the weapon into this round, playing more of an aggressive start to it. Goes for the early face with a fast play towards mid, but nothing really gets paid off, Snod. Doesn't indeed. It's going to be the 5 7. Seize dead onto Mason Craig, Deacon onto Carbapanga, and the Orb onto Hoodlum, leaving Cinder with the M4 towards B. Oh, actually, it was B short. Now actually going back towards CT spawn. So Quicks now able to get up mid for free because there's no one towards B short. Hoodlum with the Orb towards Connect. He has to find the first frag here for his team. Oh, there's going to be the opener, though, and that should be Quicks to do damage. Karma will retaliate as he takes off Slap's head with his dirty deagle. Leaves them in a four versus four at this point. A little bit of silence will fall across the field, though. Exactly. Colin, now the AWP is holding towards Delpan. Come up, hang on, maybe orping, or sorry, walking straight into his crosshair. Instead, though, the timing is not in his favour. Molly comes out towards Window, and now they know exactly what's going on. Yeah, great for this, as they know what the play is now. They can react to it efficiently. They will actually push their way in. They brute force out. They gain connector control, but Cinder wards them off just long enough to buy the CT's time to react, but it's not going to matter. You give Colour the AWP, put him in a situation where he can do damage with it. He finds two very swift frags, gets the hat trick in the end, and it's all left on Mace. The inexper inexperienced player right now in the one versus two. Bomb being planted now for mid, and you have Collar there with the up towards connector, holding the line then, holding the cross as well towards sight from CT and jungle. Mace, he could maybe catch Collar off guard. Collar has to land a nice flick here if he wants to find the frag and win the two versus one. Grabs the AK. That's tough to play with, but the angle's covered. He does tag Collar down to two HP, but he fall. Of course, Collar hits that flick. When does he miss him? You see there on your screens. Loving it. It's going to be nine to six right now as Prophecy do win the half with a three-round advantage. They win the pistol as well. So in terms of buy rounds, it is fairly equal going in favor of six to six. As I say that though, there was numerous eco rounds won, forced by wins as well for both sides. So as we go into the second half, Reason Gaming now on their T side, if they lose this T pistol, we could be seeing a nine to six scoreline if they don't get the bomb down. 
scary factor is as well, we could actually see Kylor go uncontested into this following half, because as you said, they like to run that five rifle set up more commonly. Yep. We're not looking at them going for the AWP consistently over on that T half. If that is the case, and they run what we normally see against sort of domestic UK teams, against Prophecy, they could run into a massive war early. Kolor, we're gonna see those hard defense towards mid. He could be the difference maker all out here as soon as we get into those buy rounds. Usually when we're casting Reason on this map, it seems to be on the T side, they just fall flat in a sense of, they get control of mid, but they don't really know what to do with it. They don't execute towards one of the sites once they have control of that portion of the map. They don't try and go for entries oh, yeah, through so connector or be short. Instead, it feels like they just take control of mid, they run back, they leave one towards mid, they just four man, force themselves through a choke point, and usually they get mowed down, they'll get moided off, they'll be counter naded away. Can they change that now on the stage? It's gonna be five players from the T side slowly going towards B. Korea right now, perched up on top of underpass. If he jumps down, could give away some key sound cues, but instead it's gonna be the five-man play towards the B bomb site. They have two smokes, two flashbangs as well. Will Arch find a kill? Arch gonna have to reposition at this point. The flashbang does come in as they want to swamp the side, but they do have that free CT side defense, but they're not in good angles right now to try and work together. Actually, Arch will have to do the damage on his lonesome. They're completely zoned out by the smokes, but they push through it. They run the risk, and it's paying off as they start to take down the T's. The T's look absolutely confused about what's going on, unaware of the location of this CT defense, but Cinder and Karma come back into it. The dynamic duo that have been together since 1.6 start to rev their engines. No kits on the CT side as well. Kelly may be caught off guard from the push that comes in. Cinder will peek in, flashbang aids him, but he can't quite find the frag, and they start to fall. It's all left on Karma. Can he avenge his fallen brethren? Tucked in right now, just trying to stay alive. Kolor doesn't clear it. Karma will find the frag in the end after a little bit of a whiff is displayed. It's all left on Kali. Takes the fight towards him. But unfortunately, he's going to go down. They do have the kit as well. That's the defuse coming out. Such a close round there for reason. It looked shaky. They were able to bring it back nearly the round went in their favor. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite go that way. Prophecy now winning their T pistol and CT pistol. Generally, when you win both pistols and well, both pistols in a map, you do anticipate that team to be winning, simply because you win two pistols, you've got to be expecting six rounds on the board as long as the team wins versus the four spies and ecos. So far though, in the first half, in terms of buy rounds, Jack, the game was very close. It was yeah. six to six after the pistol rounds had happened. So, unfortunate scenes here, as reason game, they go six to 10 down. And now, after getting the bomb down, they'll be on the full eco, which means we should be seeing 11 to six for Prophecy. This is the round now where they need to find frags in his SMGs. B contact play, but this is not the right time for it. Arch just forces them to run straight into the meat grinder, gets two frags, and they are eventually able to punish him for going for the confident play. But still, three men left standing at this point. They're forced to fall back. They can't run the risk of emptying themselves into the site. Essentially just giving so much money away for free there early on. Quicks as well. He wants to double down and gamble a little bit here. Cray holding the off angle here. Can actually maybe catch Quicks off guard, but no, he won't. Quicks is ready for it. And that's a nice headshot there onto Cray. Right now for Reason Gaming, they can't win this round, but they can try and do economical damage by getting frags. But unfortunately for them, the only people getting frags is Prophecy onto them. Yeah, Hoodlum had the bomb as well, and he's now fallen to Cinder, even though he's miles away. And the A site is fairly clear. The angles are covered, but if he would have had the bomb, could have been a chance of getting some extra cash into round. Right now, they're just need to tuck into Sandwich. Might actually find one frag. Two casualties to that CT side early on. Could be fairly beneficial to them. Could be indeed. Cinder finds one frag and actually takes out two of the CT players so far into this round. UMP tries to go for a third, but it's going to be two casualties for that CT side. So the money, not in the worst case scenario, but they've only won two rounds on the trot right now, which means Reason Gaming, if they win this first buy round here on the second half, on their, on their terrorist side, they can start to break the bank of Prophecy. We saw exactly how important that was and how prevalent it was to have the comeback on overpass to break the, C the CT economy. So the question is right now, can they do it again on Mirage? 6 to 11 down. I believe they were 10 to 5 down, or so, yeah, 10 to 5 down on the previous map. And now 6 to 11, it's the same deficit. Five rounds separating these two teams. Five rounds, though. A closer margin than you think. That's the rounds like this. They do actually go one for one in trades early on. Reason, they're in a good stance if they can link back together here to actually try and make this round work, especially if Arch overextends. Trying to play for information, got the cue that Karma had fallen back. Yep. Could be his downfall. So now we have two players here. A ramp from the CT from the T side, sorry. Also got Cinder as well towards Palace. Calais. Alone now towards the site as the other two remaining CT players are pushed back towards connector and middle. Flashes towards ramp, tries to get the information he needs. They might think this is actually gonna be the B play. So we're down to Cinder now try to find the first rack towards A and cause a rotation. And try and make that B site easy for themselves. 
Anyway, push is going to come in from Arch. Kamapanga finds the frag. Slap as well towards mid. Could cut off for the rotation. Yeah, that's massive. There's actually no one there for him to spot out, so he just has to go for the slow play in the back line. Can't run efficiently. They're going to hear that audio, and they will be able to take him down. Off the back of they actually backtrack through. They want to run the risk. This has all gone downhill because of this. Hoodlum gets spotted out by Slap. He finds the frag. Molotov goes down. He has control of the bomb. This forces Reason to have to hunt him actively. He's in a good location as well to take the fight. The headshot angle comes into play. You can see the panic. Doesn't want to overextend here. Just trying to stay alive and wait for his teammate to rotate in. Exactly. That's Cinder as well. 10 HP. One bullet from Slap's M4 should take him down. Flashpoint comes in. Does he anticipate the play from both in though? Kolo does damage on towards Karma. They're all going to start falling down. This is so awkward. Bounding off the ladder. But luckily enough, Kolo's there with the AWP. Can take down two members of the team. It looked like the round was in their hands. Exactly. Hudden backtracks off. They wanted to go for the late round rotate. The old double fake. So, why does Reason Gaming backtrack towards the A site? Cinder peeks out from Palace. He spots Kali there towards CT. If you know where that one player is towards the A site, you should always go to the site where you know where the remaining player is. Towards B, it's a guessing game. He could be balcony, van, bench. Uh, we call it rat snake in the UK, but the back pillars yeah. behind default. You want to know where the known factor is, where you know that remaining player is towards CT. But unfortunately for Cinder, he didn't find that frag. He didn't find that kill, sorry, which meant 12 on the board now for Prophecy, and now we're seeing the full league coming out from the T side. There should be 30 for 6 here, Jack, and another round where Prophecy can build their money even greater. Oh, slap could be such a nuisance into this round as well. He's in position here, spots out Cray. Hoodlum miles away, cannot trade efficiently as well. Trap tools under boss right now. Just has to hold out, and they're losing everything they had to this round. Oh, no, the old foot shot will take him down, cripples him. His shoes aren't going to fit after that one. Oh, exactly that. Shoots his turnouts off, and that will make it 13-6 to 6, as we see a seven-round advantage right now for Prophecy on their CT side Mirage. Look at the relief there on Slap. We saw how stressed out he was on overpass, where Reason were getting closer and closer and closer to bring him back the game. And now he's feeling fairly comfortable with the seven-round advantage. Why going back through? We do see the AWP coming out on Cray on his T side. Going to go for the glass cannon. Interesting though. as well, yeah. It's more of a desperation play, I think. He has the mid spawn. He's going to try to challenge the AWPer and try and get the first kill for his team. Flashbang goes out, tries to take the fight through. The smoke is down towards short to allow him safe passage. Hunker's down for the meantime. Coder actually playing from connector as well. They are forced by position. Good use of utility so far coming out from Reason. Call up, playing aggressive now towards connector. Mace chucks the smoke towards window. Doesn't want to be spotted out. Cray might just be walking to the scope of Coller though. Shoots his AWP. Gives away his position, and there it is, Hoodlum has taken down the first frag found for Prophecy, and the second as well from Collar towards Palace. Cinder's down as well, it's a 5 versus 3. Very, very awkward as he's got those two opening kills. That's so impactful into the late round here. Reason just left with three members. In terms of utility as well, we're working with three flashbangs, one smoke and a molly. This is not going to look too good to give him safe passage towards A. Exactly that. Cray has no armor as well, so if, you go, if they go for the contact play with the AWP, leading out from ramp, that would be disastrous. Instead, there's going to be picking his chances towards Palace, Bomb, and Mace towards Ramp. They need to find an entry here towards the site. Have a three versus four after plant. That's the only real salvageable way they can take round number 20. This is true. I'm just going to have to try and play it slow into this. Cray, he's going to be the opener. They have the flashes to try and allow him safe passage if they want to go for the flashbang over. He is going to go for the contact phase, actually. Try and spot him out close by Jungle, but Kolo had the superior angle. Is able to begin to him, takes him down. This is the instant reaction as well. They're playing contact. You have to go because this has occurred. Oh. Instantly getting dispatched as they walk into the site. Five players staying alive as well for the CT sub, which means their money is being has been building, building, and building, and building. So for Reason Gaming, 6 to 14 down, they have to win two, three rounds in a row if they want to break that CT economy and finally get rounds where they can have confidence versus the Ecos versus the Quasi Buys. But yeah, look at that. 6,000, 7,000 across the board for the CT economy. Reason Gaming need to win three on the trot if they want to break the bank from Prophecy. So they're going to the quasi buy now. Cray there without armor. And apart from that, it's going to be the four quasi buy here from the T side. Quicks as well, going aggressive towards ramp. I'm going to catch the players so they throw their nades as well. Quicks pushes through. Hoodlum actually gets flashed out. He is in the high angle though, has the high grounds nuts. Exactly. Take them down if he plays it right, but unfortunately, we'll be down. Did get the smoke out at the right time there. It's actually the flashbang over to try and allow him to peek. They flooded their way through. He did do his roll, but it's not really aided them too much. Reason get out to the site. No, they get away with the bomb plant. That is very effective into the final round because it will help them. The cash crate does damage as well. Switch out for the tech nine. Two beautiful headshots come out. At least they now have that cash injection for what could be the penultimate round. Slap, jolly as ever, laughing that one away as they do go to match point 15 to 6. Now is the scoreline on Mirage. This could be the final round here of the first best of two. Prophecy taking a very needed 2-0. Putting them up to six. Oh, at six points now, take the win here, get to nine. 
Three points for them in this best of two, which means they are going to be joint with Envious Academy, but obviously Envious Academy are playing later versus Method. So, round number 22, match point for Prophecy. Double up, set up for the T side. Push their way through. Karma tries to go for the other opener. Would have been nice if you could have taken down Kolor. That double up set up in play of Prophecy as well. So they have twice the firepower. And that aggression is on display early as well. This is going to be quite scary. Try and take that fast mid control. They do get the opening kill. Makes a good one take down Quicks. But Arch, the elevated angle is too powerful. Rattles down an absolute firestorm of rounds. And will pick up two kills. Sitting out towards Short. Trying to catch Arch off guard. Monitor. Actually, the smoke grenade comes in. Will force him back slowly. And now they could potentially boost towards window because he hit them there under window himself. I'm a pang the up towards middle. Can you find yourself an entry for a team? Will, will re-smoke window. Peeks out towards Colors but Cinder will be going down. It's going to be a four versus two there. Unlikely scenario here for reason to take this one. The duo that is left in Hoodlum and Karma. Not, it's not looking good for them, especially with Karma missing these shots. Needs to try and get that opening frag, but Hoodlum steps up massively. He's got into a world of his own. Oh no. Kali now the up towards Bia Palma. He's pushing it through T-Spawn. Could be catching these remaining T players off guard. Oh no. Calais going towards underpass. He expects him to go from top mid through underpass back to B. But unfortunately for him, though, he's going to be going towards B through T apart sorry, through B apartments, which means Prophecy right now, they think it's going to be an A ramp or palace play, but instead, and luckily for them, it's going to be the B site take here from Reason Gaming. They're just going to go for the play as well. Slow and steady, contact, work your way out on towards the bomb site, clear the angles, but Kali, luckily enough, will rotate over. There is no audio, but he has the angle exactly. covered, Snods. They're going to walk straight into his scope, should get the opening frag, and then it's all going to be downhill from there, but he misses! That could have been so ah. critical to the round. Karma takes him down as well to give them a fighting chance. It's all left on Slap. Lands the jump, though, with finesse as well. As I said, they get a bit blocked up. Still, has the Molotov flashbang and kit in his arsenal. No smoke for him, so can't go for the smoke defuse kit. Hoodlum spotted him. Hoodlum spotted him on the cross as well. They know his location. Karma has no reason to peek. He's seen the barrel of the orb. Hoodlum falls back towards Forest as well. Just trying to get the angle. Finds the dingle to his headshot. Karma forced his crowd to try and stay hunger down. Slap doing damage. Oh, finds the kill as well as he takes it down. But Hoodlum retaliates. Finds the headshot so close. It was indeed. 7 to 15 would be the scoreline now. As the rounds still keep going. It's going to be 8 on the trot. For reason, gaming, if they want to force just overtime as well, not even the win. Chance of them taking this one is so unlikely, but nevertheless. These rounds here, get a few more rounds for Mace on stage, get a bit more experience for him. But nevertheless, it will be round number 23 now. Five AKs to go for the fast play towards A. As I say, that actually bombs going towards B, so early aggression from Hoodlum will be stopped by the orb coming up from Calais. That's the thing as well, not that effective in forcing out any, any rotate at all, really. The CTs are still in a good position. They've got a lot of audio because they're pushed deep close on towards short as well. And they're going to hear that. All of the teeth sprinting back. They would have got that info. Exactly that. Four versus five right now. We've seen what happens when Reason Gaming have the advantage. They eventually close out the round. The problem is Prophecy so far on their CT side. Colors Orb has found so many first frags. This time, it is an Orb, but it's not Colors. It was Calais that found the frag there towards a ramp from Hoodlum. And with the man advantage, Prophecy can now just play the trade game. One for one in terms of kills, and they will have the advantage every single time. One minute left on the clock right now. The T's can set up for an execute towards the site. Mace can smoke towards jungle. But I don't think they're going to have a smoke towards CT, exactly where Kali's orb is. Hunker down right now. Slap, going to be essentially a turret on the site. Needs to get the opening frags to give Prophecy the chance into this one. Has all the utility as well, and his teammates are in position. They peak at the same time. They're able to rip straight through them. Slap finds a double kill. Cinder hoping to retaliate, but it's Mace to go big as he finds a double kill. Once again, it's all left in the hands of Mace. Finds the hat trick, but he will be shut down. Snods, that is going to be Prophecy closing it out. They find the 2-0, get themselves that huge win on the board. Exactly that, 60-7 to on Mirage. 16 to 13 on overpass. You saw the power of winning both pistols on Mirage. They constantly have the lead. They never let it slip. Yes, we saw some big rounds from individuals on the reason side, but it wasn't big enough. Individual plays on individual rounds doesn't win you the full game. That's the thing. We're only looking at 11 rifle round wins for Prophecy. Exactly the that. The rest of them were all off the pistol. Yep, exactly that. So, that's it. 2-0 there for uh, Prophecy. Puts them to nine points. Reason Gaming, unfortunately, didn't really get the draw, so they're still at one point. The only map they did win was in the first week versus Epsilon. Yep, good form from Prophecy here. Maybe they can try and keep this moving into the later weeks, but right now we're going to be moving straight back over to Tom and the guys on the desk.
Thank you very much, Jackie. Uh, thank you, Snods. Uh, great match there on Map Mirage. It finishes 2-0 to Prophecy. They have uh, banished those demons from their 16-0 loss last week. We're going to take a little break right now. When we come back, we'll have all the analysis for you. Don't go anywhere.